Welcome to Dork Tales. I'm Kelly. I'm the storyteller of this game, which is going to be called The Bitches of Brewery Park. I feel like I've said this before. Uh, <laughs> this is a Werewolf of the Forsaken game that takes place in our Vancouver setting, which is a shared universe with our Hunter the Vigil Chronicle and our Vampire the Requiem podcast. There are other games that are going to be coming out later that may be tied to this world, but that's for later. Uh, myself, I am a huge fan of Onyx Path and the World of Darkness in general, and have been ever since my first game, uh, my first role-playing game actually, Mage the Ascension, back in my first year of college, uh, a long time ago. And uh, since then, I've ran Mage almost exclusively, aside from some forays into Vampire, Werewolf, and I guess not exclusively at all, now that I think about it. Uh, but Mage and Werewolf, uh, The Forsaken, are my favorite games, and uh, I'm very happy to be running a game in second edition here for you tonight. So, uh, without further ado, let me introduce my players tonight. Starting on my left, we have... Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm going to be playing Megan Butler, who is an um, Iraqa Iron Master. Hello, I'm Amy. I am playing Kate. Um, going with, unless someone tells me otherwise, Powers. <laughs> Kate Powers. Powers. Oof. Uh, yikes. And your, your father's name is Maxwell. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> oh, possibly. I don't know. Um, or maybe our mom's name is Maxine. Who knows? It's Maxwell and Maxine. Oh no. <laughs> Super Max. Super Max power. <laughs> oh no. Yikes. Anyway, um, that would be a uh, Aelidoth Iron Master. I'm Jen, and I'm playing Brighton Lee, a Kahalath Stormlord. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm playing Claire Iwatani, and she is a uh, Rahu Iron Master. All right, so just to get a couple of things out there, because this is the first time that a lot of you have ever played second edition before. Um, you can hear the dog. That's that's the totem. Okay, so a couple of things just so the audience understands. Each werewolf has five different forms that they can shape in, shift into. Because you all are starting with your harmony at level seven, which means slightly more human than spirit, you're going to be able to shape shift at will. It's going to take a standard action, but you can make it a reflexive action by spending a point of essence. You all will be starting the game with ten points of essence. So feel free just to fill in a column there. Uh, besides that, you also, um, like I said, you have access to five forms. Hishu is human form. It functions like your character sheet in every way except for one, and that is it has the ability called <clears throat> Sheep's Clothing, I believe it is. Yes, Sheep's Clothing. You have a score called Primal Urge on your sheet. Primal Urge is the connection to the hunt to the werewolf within. Whenever you are moving among humans in a mass, like in a city, in a subway, something like that, you uh, add your primal urge rating to stealth rolls to blend in. Because you are in a hunter's form there. It's pretty dope. And here we go. And let me just read the others because they get a little weird and I think that the audience is going to need to know what is up with this. Social maneuvering. Remind me to buy like two more copies of this book by the way because that will be very useful. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, pardon me, you don't add it as a bonus, it is suffered as a penalty. To the to to notices to check you out. Dalu form is the near man. It is a foot taller and roughly fifty percent thicker than your average human. You will grow almost a foot in height and gain roughly a hundred to two hundred pounds of muscle and bone. Dalu <clears throat> is passable as an ugly human, wearing a hoodie, something that covers your mouth like a scarf. You can easily pass as normal. Dalu has a couple of distinct bonuses. <laughs> uh, remember, though, you're not the Incredible Hulk. Your clothes won't automatically stretch or rip in convenient places. Nuts. Uh, unarmed <laughs> attacks with the werewolf's claws now will deal lethal damage to human beings and to other things that bleed. Um, now, it says while in grapple, successive bites, uh, successful bites will deal lethal damage, uh, but... It is my opinion that uh, Dalu, from the way this is written, doesn't look like it actually needs a grapple, and neither does Hishu, because it seems to be written only for humans. Mm. Uh, you can also bite in human form, which will do lethal damage, uh, but it's a plus zero to your bite. Uh, 
Okay. Um, human teeth only do bashing damage. You have magic teeth. Okay. Uh, defense. Dalu d- applies its defense against firearm attacks at range or point blank range. Uh, perception. You'll gain a bonus to perception. You'll inflict lunacy, which is a supernatural terror onto humans. Uh, you'll gain a bunch of things, and you also gain the ability Badass Motherfucker. Yay. Badass Motherfucker works the following way. You are so scary that you can force people to give prey up to you. <laughs> For example, you go to a crack house to hunt down a spirit that's infested a local drug lord. You walk up and all of his thugs roll out with their guns drawn, and you say, Give him to me. If you succeed your roll against the highest uh, stat line there, they will go... You know what? It's probably not worth it. <laughs> um, then you have the Garu form. Garu is your war form. It is your killing form. You can remain in Garu form for a number of turns equal to your stamina plus your primal urge. That's your human form. Stamina. After that time, you have to shift down into Dalu or your dire wolf form, or you risk falling into the death rage. There's a lot of stuff we'll go into that. The big thing about Death Rage that you need to know is that if one of your packmates falls into Death Rage, all of you have to make a roll or also fall into Death Rage. Oh my god. Uh, while in Death Rage, you will attack anything that moves or breathes or is in the way of something that moves or breathes, with the exception of other pack members in Death Rage. <laughs> if they're not in Death Rage, you will attack them until they join you or die. The pack that rages together stays together. It's true. Uh, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Uh, okay now here is why this form is the best you apply defense to firearms your teeth and claws are super big uh i believe uh one of you has super duper big teeth uh (laughs) while in your garu form uh you must attack or move toward attacking if you do not you risk falling into death rage it's almost like a punchline Uh, so other things, uh, every round you heal all lethal and bashing damage on your character sheet. Mm-hmm. At the start of your turn, it, if it's not aggravated damage, it heals. Uh, silver and supernatural attacks are the only things that deal aggravated damage to werewolves that I'm willing to tell you right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the only thing that you know of. Fire doesn't, bullets don't, unless they're silver. Mm-hmm. And then finally, while you are in Garu form, you gain an ability called Primal Fear. Which means that all lesser enemies, meaning humans, meaning uh, spirits of a lower rank than you, all of them uh, suffer from down and dirty combat with you. The way that works is, at the beginning of combat, I will always ask you, all right, Amy, you are advancing on the opponent. Mm -hmm. What is your intent? I want to punch them. What is your final intent, though? Like, what is your, what, um... what resolves this fight for you? They're on the ground subdued. Great. All right. In a similar vein, I will turn and say, Jen, what is your intent in this fight? Kill them. Cool. Both of you make your rolls. If you you succeed your roll, you do whatever damage you want, and they are on the ground. Okay. Jen, likewise, uh, they're dead if you succeed this roll. Down and Dirty Combat is a one-roll fight. Okay. It's beautiful because, let's face it, if the mailman is getting chased by a werewolf, he's probably not going to be the mailman for very long. <laughs> All right. Urshel form is your dire wolf form. It looks like a wolf, but is the size of a horse, roughly. Uh, think American werewolf in Paris or uh, perhaps, or no, American werewolf in London, before that, or uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf. It's a larger wound. Yes, it's a, lar- it's a large woo. The big bonus that it gets is that um, once per scene, when you attack someone or something that is your prey, you can uh, damage its arms, legs, or knock it down. This does not require a targeted attack to do so and is just a, I bite them. Did you succeed? Cool. I cripple their legs. Nice. And it's done. Uh, there are also a bunch of other benefits that are, are pretty similar, like you're, you get fangs and you become a thing. Um, and then finally, Urhan, which is your wolf form. Uh, depending on if you're an Iron Master, you may be able to pass as a uh, as a large, strange dog that's roaming around Vancouver Island, perhaps. Um, <laughs> we recently had a wolf in a residential community, and it was a wolf that, that lives and fishes. Well, it used to fish off of a local island, and then they relocated it, which is too bad, oh, because... Island. Yeah, it was on Wolf Island. It was great. (laughs) Yeah, Um, so good. You gain another ability called Chase Down when you're in this form, where you spend one essence 
to preempt another character's action with your own. <laughs> Usually it's an attack. Uh, if multiples would do it, then it, you do a roll off. And then the last two things that you should be aware of about mechanicals are that um, your teeth in any form do lethal damage, <laughs> even to things like vampires. <clears throat> that might not come up this session, or it <laughs> might. Finally, you also have something called a hunter's aspect. This is something based on your moon phase. Your moon phase endows you with an ability to inflict a condition on someone. Uh, which I have a bunch of condition cards there, so when I tell you what your condition card is, pull it out of the stack. I'll start with, uh, with the Kahalath and work my way down. So the Hunter's Aspect, you can do it at any point in time. All you have to do is basically be line of sight or in a situation where the role makes sense. What you do is you take one of your power stats, which are Intelligence, Presence, or Strength. Then you apply a skill that, that would work, such as if you're trying to impose the isolated position, or pardon me, the isolated condition, perhaps you use intelligence and streetwise to trick them into an alleyway. On top of that, you would apply your auspice renown, which is cunning, um, honor, glory, and purity down the line. You decide what this role is. It does not have to be set. So long as it fits the situation, it works. Okay? I am in, I am in the... Uh, this is my position to say yes to you as you're doing things. Okay? Uh, Kahalath gains the monstrous aspect. When successful, it offers the resigned condition. The Elidoth is the isolating aspect. When successful, it offers the isolated condition. The Araka is the unaware condition that it provokes, and Rahu is the swaggering condition that you impose on someone else. All right. And then the last thing that you need to know as a group of characters mechanically, aside from that you have incredible tracking abilities, uh, even in human form, your nose and ears work better than normal, although in a city, your ears aren't quite as good as they could be. Uh, if you taste the blood of your prey, or any creature for that matter, you can, while tracking them, determine which direction they are. You have no idea how close they are, but you know that they are southwest and moving further south. This lasts for quite a while, so taste blood as much as possible. All right. Beyond that, you also have an oath that you have sworn to Mother Luna, the goddess of the moon, Oshokyo. Uh, the tenets of that are the wolf must hunt. It is your job to go out there and hunt, to protect both worlds from intruding upon each other, and to fulfill your desires. Number two, the people do not murder the people. You are Uratha, the people. Werewolves born from Father Wolf and Mother Luna, born from human flesh, and basically baby gods. It is your job to um, not kill each other. What that means is that uh, out, it's, it's a very debated point. Outright murder is definitely probably not a good thing and will, will be uh, negative. Uh, however, uh, defeating someone in combat isn't necessarily killing them, and having to kill a member of the pure tribes in self-defense also is more understandable. Think real life. We're not supposed to kill real people, but if someone comes out with, at you with a knife and they fall on it, that's a thing. And that's probably going to stain you for a very long time. But there are different degrees. The high respect the low, and the low honor the high. Give credit where credit's due. You'll understand renown and reputation from other werewolves. This also includes spirits. Uh, number four, respect your prey. You understand more than humans do that there is a balance. You don't just go around killing, and that includes humans. That is a bad thing to do, and you will start losing harmony. What you want to do is respect your prey and only kill when it is necessary, and only uh, don't poach humans, is a nice easy way to put that. Do not eat the flesh of man or wolf, or werewolf. Just don't do it, because uh, werewolf, wolf, and human flesh is addicting, hmm. but it sure gives you a lot of essence quick. Also, it's kind of questionable when you're eating a werewolf and you know they're going to regenerate that bite you just took. So is it bad? 
It's it's <laughs> spoiler, spoiler warning. The herd must mu- not know, and that means that you basically you have a masquerade in this one as well. You hide from humans. Um, and then the big one uh, that has changed between editions for those of you who are more accustomed to first edition is the Uratha shall cleave to the human. Uratha mate among themselves and humans. In the first edition, this used to be a thing where Uratha could not crossbreed with each other because of the potency of their blood, and there was a big thing about it. In second edition, they have removed that stipulation. You can mate with each other, you can mate with other Uratha, um, but you should live among humans because it keeps you grounded and makes sure you don't go off the spiritual deep end. Because unlike most World of Darkness games, you have a... um, what is a humanity system in Vampire, in this is called Harmony. It is not a scale where you are trying to keep it as high as possible. Ideally, you want to keep yours around 5. Mm. Halfway between 1 and 10. If you hit 1 or 10, horrible things happen to you. Horrible things. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then each one of you has a tribal band. The, um, the Iron Masters, basically, uh, three of you are Iron Masters. Your tribal ban is that you must honor your territory in all things, meaning that change is coming, keep what's important first and foremost, is the easiest way to understand that. And uh, Jen, your character is uh, allow no one to witness or to tend to your weakness, because you are a badass MF. And with that, does anybody have any questions before we begin? All right. Then in that case... This game takes place in Vancouver, British Columbia. The territory that this pack holds is right next to the commercial Broadway Skytrain station and is uh, roughly located in the center of the city right around here. I'll post one of these maps later so that you can see the rival territories and who does what. But in the meanwhile, I think it's time we started playing a game. Wee. And my mouse keeps shutting oh. off. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. It's weird. You know, oh, it probably has a sleep timer. Mm. Okay, let's get some background music going in here and let us begin. So in order to get into the vibe of the game, I'm going to start things off a little differently than you might have expected. This scene is going to be told in the past tense. You have complete control over your character and what you say, I agree, happens. With that in mind, lean into it. At the end of the scene, I'll present you with a series of questions. Each of you must answer two of the questions. There is no order in which you may choose to answer. It's all up to you. But answering your questions in advance may have some changes that will lead into the following scene. That sounds good to me. Okay. The story is true. Once, not that long ago, you could have told yourself that the city sleeps at night. Once, your senses and wits were dulled by the ceaseless repetition of human drudgery. Now you see the truth. One by one, Mother New Luna blessed you and called you to her service. To the full moon, the Rahu, she called Claire. To the new moon, the Iraka, she called Megan. To the half moon, the Elodoth, she called Kate. To the pregnant Gibbous moon, the Kahalath, she called Brighton. And like your mother, one by one, a werewolf of the crescent moon called Val Sparks the Iron called you into her service. She was the last surviving member of one of Vancouver's oldest packs, the Dogs of Brewery Park, or Brewery Dogs, as they were known. But she had run alone for over a decade. In that time, she earned her pack a new name, forged from blood and pain and the respect of rivals and fallen foes, the bitch of Brewery Park. You became a pack, bonded by blood and the hunt and the oath of the moon. And you are still a pack now that Val is dead. 
her throat torn out by the claws of a creature, or werewolf, a creature that left no scent. It has been a month since you laid Val to rest, and though tonight is dedicated to her, it is about the sacred hunt. Steam gathered around the base of the sky train as the friction of the track struggled against the February chill. It was just past 11 when you followed your target off the metro line and onto the platform at Broadway Commercial Station, the edge of your territory. The smell of your prey was pungent in your nostrils, oil and brass. It hid amidst the sheep in a rumpled blue hoodie and dark denim jeans beneath a London fog overcoat stained and torn. <coughs> its collar was turned up and the face hidden beneath a raised hood and surgical mask. There are so many of these masks on the trains now. Everyone's afraid. It appeared to be a normal human, but to your wolf's senses, anything but. As you stepped out of the train, Megan, you tasted the tang of adrenaline rising to your tongue. How did you stalk your prey? From the shadows. It walked down the corridor, working its way toward the escalator that would take it to the main area. How far back did you stay? 30 feet. As long as there's like five or so people between me and them every time. You find yourself wedged between several international students talking in a lated Mandarin. A couple of them are playing on their phones, one of them playing a smartphone game. You can see it has to do something with catching monsters or fighting monsters or something. Another one of them is checking an Instagram feed. Behind you, lower on the escalator, you can hear some derogatory comments from a pair of old British women. One of them is pushing a walker that is full of old socks, newspaper. It smells. You can smell bits of that slightly vanilla scent of old age and feces off of her socks. She stepped in dog shit. And with that, he's on the main platform. It's on the main platform. As you turn back, you can see that the thing in the trench coat takes a right. It cuts through the pizza place on the main floor that connects to the outside world. Its footfalls are perfectly timed to the throbbing of dozens of drunk college students buying $2 a slice reheated cardboard. Do you follow through the pizza parlor? Yeah. How do you get through the throng of people? There are so many of them there, almost two dozen in this narrow, 10 foot wide with tables interjected. A drunk girl stumbles in front of you and laughs and almost smacks you in the face with her phone as she reaches out to take a selfie. Oh my God, get out of the way. What do you do? Um, just gently kind of do the athletic sort of dance around them of slipping through every little spot. And I'll just nudge her just enough to send that selfie off. All right, that sounds good. You'll easily be able to do that. The creature steps through on to Broadway. It's gotten an advantage on you, and is quite a few feet ahead now. But Brighton, you were already waiting for this. Where were you watching from? What was your cover? I was around a corner, just, just out of sight. It walks past you. Do you wait for your pack mate, or do you give chase immediately? I wait. It's only a few heartbeats before your pack mate arrives next to you, and then you're walking with Megan. A walk down commercial. The street flooded with late-night body-seeking bars and clubs, all of them already socially lubricated by some home pre-gaming. They swayed drunkenly like weeds in the wind, 
but your prey step between them as if they weren't even there. The steps that it took were perfectly timed, meticulous, the clip, clop, clip, clop of hard soled shoes. But at the edge of that crowd of people, one person did not move in a way that they expected. Kate, what did you do to your prey as the two of you collided? Shove with shoulder. Hey, which way are you going? <clears throat> it stumbled away, looking at you with eyes that are too white to be normal. So white that you could barely see the pinprick of an iris in the center. But you could hear it counting in a high-pitched voice. 55, 54, 53. It doubled its pace. It lurched away, down 10th Street, where a few old business businesses flank the entrance to a residential one-way street. To its right, a fleet of damaged and stained rental bicycles lined the road. The three of you rounded the corner, gaining momentum. How far back did you stay? Or did you grow close enough to hear it count down the time even further? Don't want to let it get away. We'll stay pretty close. It swerved left into a small four-space parking lot filled with three green dumpsters and a single car. The walls were bare, covered in a single swath of graffiti, an eyeball. A comically small billboard stood vigil over the walk there, encouraging readers to get happy in bright white letters. As your prey walked beneath it, the bulb, illuminating the billboard, burst with a soft It paused and looked up as the street lights around it dimmed and shorted in kind. It stepped into the darkness toward a brown metal door hidden behind a solitary car, a rusted gray Toyota. The only light was coming from a blind cut through to the right, the only way out of this parking lot. It reached for the doorknob, its fingers flexing in the same perfect rhythm as its steps. And then that solitary shaft of light was blocked by a shadow Claire, how large was the shape? What form was it in? <laughs> and what did you do in it? Um, Claire will have been standing there, probably in Garu. <laughs> so you shift to Garu. Right away, yeah. Great, get that out of the way. <laughs> First Garu. Uh, take a beat. <laughs> um, she will... You know, she'll probably be shifting up to it, bare her fangs, and lunge at it. Sounds good. So that, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Okay. You lunge at it with your claws or with your mouth? With your mouth. You lunge in with your jaws, and as you clamped down onto its shoulder, you rip the clothing apart. And you can see underneath the pale drawn flesh of a bloated, drowned corpse. It stumbles back and the surgeon's mask rips from its face and it it's a bloated, bluish-gray body, nude beneath those clothings, no undergarments to speak of. It's all desiccated and rotten out, but that's not what catches your attention in that brief second. It opens its mouth and instead of teeth, you see the whirring of cogs and gears grinding along either side of its jawline. It looks up at you and you can see the swirl of mechanisms where the eyes should be and hear the ticking coming from the bloated corpse of its torso. Who went in next? Rushing forward, what did you do? Um... Slam it to the ground. Who saw his face and mouth up close, and who heard what it said next? Okay, I did then. So, Kate did. You can hear it speak in a voice that is impossibly high-pitched. It's words coming in rhythmic first tongue, the language of the spirits that you all instinctively know. <laughs> 
it roils inside of your mind. I would like you to do me a favor and make me a resolve and primal urge roll at a minus three. Ooh, yikes. You, spend, you may spend willpower retroactively that you will have regained. <laughs> yep, spending willpower. Okay. As you said, that would have had me at two dice. So plus three. Yeah. Willpower. All right, so let's hear it. Uh, one success. One success. You will feel a shock of fear roll into your mind, roll between your ears, and you will start fixating on it's speaking first tongue for numbers. 29, 11, 14. You start focusing on the figures for a moment, thinking about the equations that it's trying to cram into your head, and then you shrug it off. It's laying on the ground. Who crippled its legs? I would have. would have darted in from the side. How did you do it? Um. In which form? I think I would have shifted into Urhan. Into Urhan. Mm-hmm. Right. And just stayed in the shadows and in the corner of the. up against the wall and darted in at the moment it was distracted with these guys. <laughs> There's the sound of twisting a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> as you remove its leg, and it bleeds oil onto the ground and around your slavering jaws. You do your best, you did your best to spit onto the ground. Its leg dropping, pardon me, its foot and ankle dropping from your mouth and falling to the ground with a clatter. Who hesitated? I did. And what happened because of the hesitation? Its hands are still free. It was able to to reach out and and grab. Who was injured? And how much? Um, he takes one. <laughs> <laughs> what? How, how much was I injured? How injured? Oh, how much were you injured? Yeah. Um, grabbed you by the throat. You will, f- you will see through the hands, the flesh peels away, and suddenly grinding gears are clamped around your throat, pulling your neck into its embrace. Mm. Who dealt the killing blow? Sure. All right. Darted in when it was least expecting it. All right. And are you staying in Urhan form when you did this? Yes. All right. You dive forward, and as it clamps around your packmate's throat, you can hear the sound of her esophagus being ground into the meat, the metal of that hand. You will never again for the remainder of your life, Kate, be able to crush a plastic water bottle without flinching. (laughs) (laughs) The foreman Urhan lashes forward, grabs the throat, and shakes. And then the Garu rips the body in half. (laughs) Did you devour its essence as per the sacred hunt? Well, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, so everyone will start at full essence. All right, so I've been asking, these are my 10 questions. So I believe a couple of you haven't answered more than once. Christine, you have. I think Amy has now. So I think it's down to you two now. Did anyone see you? Yes. Gain a beat. All of you may gain a beat. Mm. Okay. Who were they? Or would you rather not know? Some of the homeless. Okay. How did you get away? Did you just walk away casually? Did you run? Did you call an Uber or a Lyft, <laughs> which are available as of two weeks ago? <laughs> we walked. Yeah, we know this area very well. We wouldn't know how to get out of there. And finally, what did you do afterward? Probably debriefed, went to um, our safe place, and uh, called it a night. <clears throat> 
<laughs> You've never seen a claim like that before. That mechanical? That's strange. It's new to all of you. You debriefed. And you were successful. One more hunt for Val. You slap the alarm clock. It's never enough sleep when there's a hunt. The next day comes quickly. And... Claire, mm -hmm. you overslept your first alarm. <laughs> you have very Again. little time to eat before work. Okay. What do you do? How do you get to work from where you are? Uh, she will use um, the transit. You ride the sky train yeah. as it chunders along, because that's a real word. <laughs> as, it, as it chunders along its way toward... Uh, and your software firm is in downtown? Oh. It's actually in your territory? Mm -hmm. it's, it's on the edge, right? It's on the edge. It's on the northern border. Okay, so you're basically going back to where this hunt was last night. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> as you step onto the tracks, or not, well, as you step onto the platform at Broadway Commercial and head off toward your, your work, you get a strange sense. I'd like you to do mm -hmm. me a favor and make me a... Wits and composure roll at a minus two <laughs> because this is a sight based thing. Okay. One success. As you wander out, you can see that there are several homeless people loitering around on that lower platform. One of them, uh, a woman in her late 30s with um, a little chalk of gray starting to go through her hair is holding up a sign that says anything helps almost not by choice and she holds it out for people as they pass and someone does drop a one dollar coin in and as you pass she looks up at you and her eyes will widen and she will lower the sign away from you oh and try to avert her eyes. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. I'll make a note of that. And it's probably not anybody wrote it. Yeah. It's not long before you fill your coffee cup. Thanks. And you are inside of your office. <sighs> Here we go again. Here you go again. <sighs> What do you do at the office? Like, what is your job specifically? Um, she takes care of emails relating to product sales and... Um, so basic administrative grunt work? Basically, yeah. Well, I think that I'm going to need you to do me a favor and make me a resolve. Oh, oh okay. That's fine. Do you quit your job today? <laughs> it's today the day. It's today the day. <laughs> uh, so I'd like you to make me a resolve plus politics roll. Oh, okay. Or a composure plus politics roll, depending on whether or not this is based on your stubbornness or your ability not to freak out. How about my stubbornness? Okay. <laughs> One. One success. You'll manage to hold your tongue. Just barely. As one... <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Uh, you'll manage to hold your tongue as one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, one of the men in your office takes credit for a significant amount of the legwork you put in over time doing last weekend. Unpaid, of course. Of course. And you manage to just contain yourself. But as you sit in that meeting taking notes, you glance down and you see that you've written the words fuck Brad 15 <laughs> times in the margins without even realizing it. Brad, for his credit, is... <clears throat> A recent UBC graduate of the Master of Business program and is looking like someone shines his shit every morning. <laughs> hey, it's not a problem at all. 
I'm here to make sure that everything gets done smoothly. And I couldn't do it without a little bit of help. He smiles in your and Gina's general direction. Gina leans in, and she works with you. She's a she's a same level. She's a peer. Yeah. Your friend Gina leans in. What a dick walk. Yeah, well, it's not surprising, but yeah. Yeah, but what a dick walk. <laughs> She'll maybe flip her paper a little bit towards Gina. <laughs> Something She'll to share over there. Her papers. Oh no, no, please continue. As I was saying, the quarterly readout your boss <laughs> continues with. It's just going to be another one of those days. Across town, at Black Dog Video, a customer wanders the shelves, flanked by Kate. Yeah, so I remember watching it, and it was a movie with Tom Hanks <laughs> mm -hmm. where he was, he met the president of the United States. I know that. And there was, there was Dr. Pepper. I was pretty baked, she says. <laughs> this 50-year-old woman with cat eye glasses or probably cat rimmed glasses and a leopard print jacket. Her hair reaches around like a pair of hands, like you want to do to your own face rig now, just cover it up in that, can I speak to the manager haircut? Yeah. He's kind of hot. Do you know he does Tantra? No, I didn't know that. I guess that's how you keep a marriage going as long as they have. And Rita. Hayworth? No. I guess it would have to be Rita Hanks. I mean, not necessarily, but... Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're funny. <sighs> uh, where's the... Okay, um... Do you know what movie is it... What it might be? <laughs> Amy has no idea. Is this a real movie that you're talking about? This is about? a real movie. Which one? Uh, it's Forrest Gump. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, um... Unfortunately, that one's already been rented. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it should be back in the next couple of days. Oh, God. This is why I get everything on digital. Why do places like this even exist? Some people really like having the print media. This isn't a bookstore. <laughs> why are you so digital stupid? Digital media. People still love having the CDs. Did you know records are making a comeback? Like, people are going vinyl. Yeah, they're because they're actually worth something, not like DVDs. Well, let me know when your Apple TV crashes. Have a good day. Hello, anyway, I gotta go help someone else. Have fun browsing. She watches you with a bit of venom as the haze of 420 uh, that she probably started in the AM. Yeah, Kate, uh, Kate is gone. <laughs> She's Kate's gone. Away. One of your co-workers leans in. What's uh, what's his name? Uh, that will be... Let's go with... Jason. And uh, Jason leans in. He's a... He's a fairly broad Japanese man with uh, mutton chops to die for. Hmm. I'm not even kidding. He once saw a Kurosawa movie when he was a teenager and decided that... Um, that was the coolest dude that he'd ever seen in his life, whose name escapes me right now, uh, Toshi, uh, Mifune. Oh. And Mifune was the coolest guy ever. And as soon as he could grow facial hair, he grew his mutton chops all the way down to the jawline, and damn if it doesn't look good on him. He leans across the bar, scratch, or pardon me, the, across the counter, scratches his chin. I think you're going to get ridden up for that. No one actually puts in direct complaints anymore. She's too big to know how. Do you want me to play damage control? Or do you think it's fine? It's fine. Yeah. I can do my own damage control. Trust me. You can do your own damage. And damage control. Alright. It's okay. I got something to smash later tonight. Nice. Tinder? Flirt? No. I'm gonna go, like, take a baseball bat to some empty crates. 
Uh, are you going to the wreck it place? Yeah. Holy, tell me how that is. I really got to get some anger out. It's it's great, honestly. Dude, my parents are getting back together. Ooh, I'm sorry. What the fuck? Yeah. They I broke don't... up for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. Your dad deserves so much better. Right? <sighs> well. Oh, hold on. I got a phone. Uh, the phone's going off. One sec. Yep. He goes and. Uh, hello, Black Dog Video. Uh, yes, we have Game of Thrones Season 8. Yes, we'll hold it for you, Bill. Yes, Bill. What do you do with the rest of your day there? Continue putting things back in order that somehow, for some reason, people keep putting the wrong DVDs in the wrong places, and for some reason, we've also got a probably small collection of VHS, just because that seems to be something absolutely. new about. Absolutely. Now, as you are, uh, as you're putting that away, uh, you'll look up and see that there is another one of these middle-aged mom types mm. standing up at the front. She looks around and is, is waiting at the corner of the counter. Hi, can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. She turns and she has her hair back in a quick ponytail. She doesn't look like she put any makeup on this morning and is wearing Lululemons and, uh, and a zip-up. Actually, not that different than what you normally see your pack made in. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There are bags under her eyes, and in her hand you can see that there are a thick stack of photocopied pages. I don't know if you put flyers up, uh, but I was hoping that you could, and she hands you a flyer. Hmm. As you look at it, it has a picture of a teenage girl, 17 or 18 maybe, Katrina Bouchard. Hmm. Missing. Last scene leaving the Rio Theater. Hmm. Reward. Uh, there's a $500 reward for any information. She has been missing since the beginning of February. Today is, in fact, the 16th of February. Hmm. Her hand is shaking, and you can tell that just by looking at Katrina that this must be her mother. Um, I mean, we don't normally put up flyers, but we can definitely take it and please. maybe the manager can put it up. We'll, we'll have to throw, pass it by him. Is your manager here right now? I, I can talk to them. No, he's not. It'll be in tomorrow. But if you, I can write down any details. It should be all on the flyer. Um, if there's anything at all, uh, she'll fish around in her purse. And we'll pull out um, a couple of business cards mm -hmm. that have her name on them. Lois Bouchard, she's a real estate agent. My number's on there, but mm -hmm. if you need to reach me, this also has my email. And if um, yeah, I know she came in here sometimes. Have you seen anything? Does she look familiar? Like Make me an intelligence and wits roll. Cool. <laughs> 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 no success. I don't recognize her. Nope. All right. Uh, as you are looking at it, you you don't really recognize her. Like I mean, she looks like a lot of teenage girls in Vancouver. She's mm -hmm. dark hair, um, pretty face, slightly too much makeup, mm. eyebrow game thick. <laughs> yes, I I don't recognize her myself. She's probably been in and out, but we get so many faces. But I'll keep an eye out. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And she'll mm. turn around and hesitantly leave. <sighs> what was that about? Jason says as he leans over the bar. Another missing kid. I thought people were supposed to run to Vancouver. <sighs> mm. I don't know. Uh, She's been missing for like two weeks. Oh, and that's outside the window. She's probably, uh, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we can put it up. <clears throat> sure. I'll get the tape. And you say the exact same thing, actually. Hold still. I can get the tape. 
as you reach into your drawer, Megan, and grab some professional grade medical tape, or athletic tape, I should say. The man that's on the table in front of you looks familiar. He should, by the way. His name is Christopher Price. He's an up-and-coming TV actor on new series about some type of superhero. Mm -hmm. oh, no, you don't really follow it. But they were doing shoots in the neighborhood, and an unfortunate accident on set had him twist his ankle pretty badly. It's not broken. A light sprain, but a little bit of work will <clears throat> get him back on set by today, tomorrow mm -hmm. at the latest. What do you do? How does your office function? Um, I'm thinking it's probably one of those collective sort of ones where there's like a front desk, obviously, and a waiting area. And then kind of side spaces, maybe a larger space where several people, like everybody can use, where it's got like the exercise ball, mm -hmm. like a balance table, like, just okay. stuff to show people how to do the right exercises. And so is things. your room its own enclosed thing or is it like a big sliding glass wall that people can look into? No, it's probably its own enclosed because I mean like patient privacy and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? That's true. That's true. So what if somebody has to take off a shirt so that you can see a good, movement properly? That's a good point. Can you go ahead and give me uh, just a quick intelligence and medicine to kind of diagnose this and make sure? And this would specifically be physiotherapy, correct? This is physiotherapy. I'm going to be where Christine rolls nine successes because that's what she do. <laughs> uh, nope, just two. Just two. <laughs> you do a quick check over, and it is just a um, it is just a minor sprain. But something twigs your attention as you're as you're wrapping the joint and making sure that it's mobile. It is a a dark shade of purple beneath the flesh. He can't stop tapping his other foot. nervous twitch or yeah you've noticed that he's had a piece of cloth paper something in his hand that he's been fuddling with running it back and forth between his thumbs tugging on it making small tears in it mm -hmm. and mind you he's been making fairly normal even charismatic chit chat yeah um i uh thanks for fitting me in so quickly i uh, you know, this kind of stuff just happens, right? Like, I, uh, I should have been paying more attention. I didn't make a jump. Yeah, no problem, Mr. Price. You're lucky we had a couple cancellations today. Be able to get you in so fast. Um, but getting it all wrapped up, so you should be able to use it. Um, I get you're busy, but whenever you can, put your foot up, put some ice on it, and give it that chance, because then you're not going to drag out the injury. For weeks. No, that's fair. Well, um, do you want me to... Especially if like, you're reading a script, right? Like you... Uh, yeah, yeah. When you get the updates. Don't you guys get updates and stuff like that all the time? If you sit down to read it for a moment, oh, stick your foot up. Doc, if they give us a script before we start shooting, we're lucky. <laughs> fair. You, they're doing rewrites so often. Um, do, you want, do you want me to try the foot? See if it's... Yeah, let's see. Take it easy. Let's see how if you can put your weight on it. Comfortably. <laughs> he gets up on... Yeah, I think it's pretty... Ah! Okay, okay, okay. Okay, no, well, Let's get you back down. Oh, ah, it's pretty st it's steady, but it hurts like hell. I will check it a little more carefully, sir. Do you... I really gotta get back out there. Do you have anything? Like, can you write me a script or something? I'm sorry, I can't prescribe. I'm pretty sure physios can't. Uh, if you are a kinesthesiologist, you can, I believe. I'm doing physiotherapy in particular. Ah, yeah, okay. So do you do you have a sorry? Jen? I was gonna say they can uh, often recommend to doctors, but like my physiotherapist yeah. will have to recommend to my doctor. Do you, for me to have you, you but you have a doctor in the clinic, right? Uh, we do. Like um, you, can, you could just scoot out and ask him real quick, right? You notice the note there. He's gonna want you to take an X-ray. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you have the time for it. 
Um, have you ever here, I've got some of these rubs. I'll give them numbing cream and stuff like that. <laughs> like a free here, I've got free samples. They give tons of these to me all the time. Can you give me a presence and uh, a presence and persuasion roll? Because I think you're trying to just like kind of get him out of here quick, right? No, I'm trying to avoid him asking for obviously um, opiate painkillers. Give me a, pr a presence or manipulation, depending on what you think is better for the situation, plus a medicine roll. Okay. Um, so... Because this is a fairly standard role. My cousin works in this field and has to do this daily. I'm going to go with presence and, I think, medicine. Sure. Presence and medicine just to kind of... Do the doctor voice. <laughs> yeah. Doctor voice. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Three. Did you reroll your tens? Yes. Okay. Or, wait, eight is a success, right? Eight is a success, yeah. Four, sorry. <laughs> it begins. <laughs> okay, what is this? All right. Oh, I should have added a die. I keep forgetting I've got physiotherapy as a specialty. Yeah. Five. Five successes. You can see there's a moment there where it could have gone completely sideways, where you hold out the vial of, or the... It's tube, probably like tube. these little small tubes, like they're minuscule, but I maybe give him five or something. You can see the veins in his face and the tension in his <laughs> jawline as he grits his teeth. His hand starts to tremble and that cloth in his hand starts to tear slightly. Yeah, that'll probably help, he says, res mm -hmm. resigned. You don't think he's probably a bad guy, but... But this sort of lifestyle tends to get addiction thanks this was a really uh, <clears throat> thanks yeah i'll uh can i get two of those maybe yes like here she'll go find fish out a little bag and throw a few in and throw a roll of tape in thanks i'm a big klutz i go through a lot of these i appreciate it yeah no problem um if you're able to in a day or two if it's still not feeling 100 percent, see if you can come back in quickly if we have any time slots open get you in and try and make sure that there's nothing underlying maybe that you've done more to it than we think cool right. uh yeah thanks also if you can get your people to give you a hand with it ice bath for the foot easier than just putting a that would be pretty pack cold right yeah but it gets all the way around the ankle instead of one side where the ice pack is yeah but that means it'd have to like put my uh my, my stuff in ice water right <laughs> no 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 just your foot just get a basic oh god i guess i could just do my foot <laughs> you don't need all of you in there it's just the one foot oh now if you'd sprained your knee you'd probably have to get more get more into a bath yeah or my butt <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen somebody sprain their butt yet i'm gonna knock on wood on that though because i don't i'm sure i would get it otherwise okay <laughs> thank you and with that, you'll usher him back out. Spank your butt. Oh, my God. This is quality entertainment that we're providing for you here. All right. Hold on to your butts, because you might sprain them. That's funny. I fell right into customer service voice there. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. We're all so, going to be doing uh, this, I think. <laughs> customer service voice? I don't even know that person. And uh, meanwhile... As the door opens and you look out into the lobby for your next patient, a woman standing at the counter handing out flyers. Your receptionist takes one. Uh, who's your receptionist? Do you have a name? Um, I actually hadn't come up with a name for them. Male or female? Um, let's go... Young male. Young male? Okay. Uh, it's gonna be... One of those very earnest, sort of... Uh, David? Do we have a David in game? I thought... Okay, uh... so it's gonna be uh, Charlie McGinnis. Oh, yeah. Uh, Charlie takes the, takes the flyer, thanks her profusely, and sends her on her way. And then turns to you as the only person with rank that's visible at the moment. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, boss? 
Um, he runs a hand through his sandy blonde hair and looks over at you. He's cute, but not that cute. Do we put these out? What is it? That's a missing person flyer. It's kind of depressing. Do we have a community board? <sighs> There's one in the lobby. I, I can go put it down on my lunch break. Yeah, if you don't mind. I mean, that's probably something for the community board. Maybe local. You know what? Nobody, nobody checks the damn thing anyway. But you never know if somebody glances up, sees it, and stops. I read that board when I'm bored. Okay, I'll do it for you. <laughs> if my phone dies, I read that board. Okay, There's well, nothing else to read. You tried a book? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I know they're who pays They're all at me. home. They're heavy, okay? <laughs> I don't carry them with me. It, hey, you know what? It's good. If you ever want to join me at CrossFit, I can, like, we can, it, they won't be so heavy after a while, okay? <laughs> I think I'm doing fairly good and I'll flex. <laughs> I've got athletics. That's... Like, I can that, do this. That's fair. No, no, no. <laughs> you're, uh, you're absolutely right. Sorry, boss. Hey, no worries. And uh, with that... I just need to find more of those little pocketbooks. Everything's huge and has hardcovers now. I mean, you can always get an e-reader, but I guess there's the same problem there. Yeah. I just need to learn to actually find, bring the damn charger I bought for my phone, my spare well, one, and bring and stash it here. You can always just use our chargers. We've got a bunch. I keep needing to bring the damn thing I keep forgetting. It's sitting there on my counter. Yeah, it's the same charges. Is it? Do you have one of the new ones? That, whatever that fangled USB-C? I had to buy all new cords when I got my new phone. Yeah. Really? Shit. Oh, I just yeah. need to ask you from now on. Uh-huh. I'm all under the 30. Answers. I've got a good phone. Fair. Fair. Uh, your next appointment, too. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, doctor, it happened again. No, <laughs> uh, it's an old man uh, named uh, Martin Martin uh, Bolinsky. Martin, how are you besides the obvious? What? <laughs> Come on in. I'm, I'm not oblivious. <laughs> you lead him into the back room. And uh, what... Three o'clock in the afternoon on a s Saturday. Wow. Actually, this would be. I said I just said that you were at work doing you overtime. Did. Oh, you're doing overtime God. today, apparently, because okay. I said that it was Saturday. <laughs> and you're doing Saturday work because that's what physio do. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you're retail. <laughs> and you're retail, so I didn't even have to pay attention. So on a Saturday evening, well, afternoon, afternoon as. The rain is sweeping over Vancouver. Where would Brighton be? Probably starting her shift Saturday evening at a roadhouse. Oh, so, yeah, the roadhouse. Which one? The oh, Dime. Oh, the Dime. I was, I was thinking you were working at the Storm Crow for some reason. No, I'm I'm at the less classier, or less classy uh, alternative <laughs> down the street. God. I, I, you know what? I actually <laughs> hadn't had a chance before a game to look this up. Is this a real place? Mm hmm Okay, one it's more. down commercial on our side. Oh my god! <laughs> the second, the second word that oh yeah, it's actually a roadhouse. It's yes. hold on. <laughs> oh oh boy! Wow. This is perfunctory. Like huh. this is a perform. Is that Kelly from Saved by the Bell? <laughs> on the wall. Uh, oh, watch out, Corona! It's premium, premium dive bar. Premium. Premium. Yeah, premium yeah, dive bar. <laughs> Oh, That's where I work. Do you, do you do you arrive at work on time? <laughs> yes. All right, and I am not risking losing my job. <laughs> and with that, you uh, you will have a fairly uneventful shift. Actually, tonight on a Saturday, how well liked are you with this job? Um, I'm gonna say fairly. I I do my work and I do it well. Um, there's probably some, some of the, you know, more the, slacker type people who are like, ugh, okay. kiss ass or something. Is that the person mm -hmm. who makes the schedule or do the schedulers like you? 
schedulers like me because I'll always pick up a shift. All right. In fact, you're picking up a shift tonight. Mm -hmm. At a certain point in the night, I want you to do me a favor and I want you to make me a wits mm -hmm. and wits and composure roll will be fine or wits and streetwise. As the night drones on, tonight you're getting off at 8 p.m. It's one of your early evening shifts. It's not ideal. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? Nothing. Nothing? The mood in the restaurant, well, in the bar, shifts. People are getting annoyed. Jesus fuck, I ordered this drink like a half hour ago. What the fuck? Hey, it's an old fashioned. It's not that hard. They've literally had it forever. Sorry, I'll get that out. I'll get that out to you right now. Are you my server? You don't look like my server. I have the brunette over there with the pigtails. <laughs> I'll see what she's up to. Uh, and your coworker, one of the slackers, is a um, is a girl named Estella. Because in a hipster town, a name like this, Estella is pretty normal. Okay, so I'll write her down real quick. All right. Estella does this two nights a week to help pay for her partying tab while she's studying at SFU. She actually wants to drop out and get hired by the CW and go work on well, the same show as that Christopher Price guy. But right now, she looks like she is almost in tears. Her mascara is beginning to run at the corners a bit, and she has a lot of it on. This could be disastrous. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Jesus. Brayden, I've got this customer, and he won't leave his fucking table, and he's just, he's, like, we only serve, like, like how much food do we actually serve? He's ordered everything, like, 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 twice, and he keeps, like, every time I try to serve another customer, he's barking at me and getting me to bring him more stuff, and it's, like, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I'm feeling totally... Okay, go take five in the back. I'm gonna take table seven, the old-fashioned, and then I will handle that table, okay? Do you have any weed? Not on me. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see if Jeff has any. Calm down. Yes, I'm trying. And she pushes her way into the back room. I'll go take the old fashioned to the to the table. All right. I want you to make me a a roll, and that's going to be a composure plus primal urge. Hmm. That's fun. One. You take the you take the drink over to the to the businessmen who are sitting there enjoying their night off. You can tell that they're businessmen because they don't even take the suit off when they're not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Here you go, sir. Someone actually serves here. Hey, do you get the tip for this, or does whatever she is get the tip for this? Uh, we split tips. Yeah, don't. And he'll slide a toonie across the bar. I'll take it. Thank you. Slip it into my pocket. I won't turn down extra tips. <laughs> you know what? They got the dive part of this place right. Fuck. He says to his friend, who just laughs all teeth like a horse. <laughs> or a donkey, I suppose. I'm just thinking about Pinocchio now. <laughs> I'm thinking about Bojack. I'm thinking about Bojack now, too. Thank you. <laughs> all right. There's one table at the back. It's kind of tucked away. It's in polite company. It's the makeout corner. It's also called Seaman Alley. <coughs> Lovely. It's where people go to buy a quick hand job or to fool around at the end of a particularly successful date or where several of uh, the other students that you know make their party money. But tonight it's different. Now, the dime doesn't have terribly much food, I'm pretty sure. Does it have? Or it does have a restaurant. Okay, never mind. Uh, it has a re Oh, they're the same guys who own El Furniture Warehouse. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I just Googled them real quick so that I could pull this out. Uh, actually, there's a solid menu in front of you. And you can see that on his table, are about 
17 plates stacked high. Nothing remains of the pierogi plates, the chili, coli, and cucumber, uh, several plates that had salads and are just now caked with bits of HP sauce and ketchup. Enchiladas. Desserts. Rings and rings of sugar that you see this man behind the bar or behind the table. I one of the bar, sorry. This man behind the table reaches forward and with a hand so swollen you're expecting the skin around the knuckles to burst. He grasps the edge of one of the plates, pulls it toward him, and begins to lick the sugar off the plate with a fat tongue the size of his or the width of his mouth. He looks up at you through a pair of small round glasses. His face is uncharacteristically small on his body, but around the edges of the neck, you can see deep stretch marks from where it had, it looks like he gained this weight very rapidly. And as he looks up with a full mouth, he goes, I want three more orders of enchiladas. Are you my waitress? We're all taking care of all the tables tonight, sir. I'll send someone to take some of these plates. I need the two glazed tilapia, and and I want the fat of the the, the flatbread, and I want gravy. Do you have gravy? Yes, we do. I want I want gravy. Sure thing. As you look him in the eyes, you can see that they're bloodshot, like an addict reaching for a fix that chasing something that's not biting. But it's the smell. You smell something. Saccharin. Sickly sweet. Like antifreeze beneath his skin. You're new to this, but you recognize when something's off. Mm -hmm. Um, I will, I will go put his order in, mm -hmm. but I will also, um, I'd like to use Know Thy Prey. Okay. One of my gifts. Sounds good. What page is that? Uh, I don't know what page it is, but I have it written down. Um, so I, what? um, there's no, no resistance, okay. um, unless there's the anon anonymity merit. There is not. Okay. Um, and I can use it on any character present that I can perceive. Okay, what kind of gift is it? Uh, knowledge, honor. Knowledge, okay. Yeah. I was looking at insight, I'm like, I don't see it. No. God, the gifts in this game are so good. <laughs> All right, so it's wit, socialize, and honor, spend an essence. Yeah. Spend an essence. One success. One success. As you look out from behind the bar after punching in to the punching into the computer. His name is uh, Gerald Moses. Well, that's the name that leaps to your mind immediately. Mm -hmm. Gerald Moses, Jerry, with a G. Mm -hmm. But another name rises up in your mind. Alakumukua. The Force. No, that's not how it translates. Alakumukula, its first tongue. That which feeds violently. This is the first time you've ever been at ground zero for this. You're looking at someone who is being ridden or claimed by a spirit. What do you do?
I'm going to, um, is, uh, is Jello back yet? As you look around, you can see that the back door is propped open through the kitchen, and she is sitting on a milk crate, taking the longest drag off of a joint that you've ever seen in your life. Excellent. Okay. Um, she waves a hand at you, and she notices you looking. <coughs> Almost. Um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, step into the into like back area for a little, for a minute mm -hmm. and just throw out a text to these guys. Okay. Um. Because I do not know what to do here. <laughs> All right. You are finishing up your shift and just dropping your. Well, actually, you probably just wear the the t shirt of whatever mm -hmm. place it is. You're heading out the front door when the text hits you. You're locking up your office for a six o'clock. I see you were done at six or eight. Were you there? You're off at eight, and it's probably about six-ish right now that you're there. So you're locking up. Maybe even done already, because most places close earlier on a Saturday if it's, right? They are only mm -hmm. open for partial. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're on your way out. You're doing something else, and you are out shopping with Gina. You're, what are you doing? Um, if it's if around 6, 6.15. Probably actually at home. Okay. So you've made your way home. You yeah. slide off your shoes, which... Yeah. And, oh, that feels so, so good. good. <laughs> it's, oh, it's nigh orgasmic just to get out of these things. Oh, you just, you look lovingly at your bed and the PJs that you've already laid out, and then your phone buzzes. <laughs> <laughs> and what does the text say? <laughs> Um, got something down at, at work. Um, I think it's going to be bad. Help? Question mark? Great. Soon. Thankfully, I'm like across down the street. That's really true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're close enough to come take a look at this for me. Do you all assemble? Mm -hmm. I'll probably be there first. Okay, you can make it there in about, all of you together in about 15 minutes. And on a Saturday night, the place is packed. You can hear how the crowd mills around, chatting and making small talk. The guffaws of, of drunks and... The, uh, the clattering of ice inside of glassware. And the three of you will run into each other directly outside. Did you just head in together as a team? Mm, I probably was there yeah. first and checked in and then went to wait. Okay. I'll probably just hang out outside and <clears throat> text Brighton to be like, all right, I'm here. Um, if... Uh, I'll tell you guys to come inside. Get, get a text. That's the god mission. I just need to remind myself of what some of my crap was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and once once you guys come inside, I'll I'll try and find a cleared table that has a a line of sight to the back corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one won't have it. Nobody. And just pull the. Kind of customer servicey. It's stuff that's yeah. gonna be in the werewolf one. Like, hey, welcome to welcome to the roadhouse. Uh, you know, feel free to have a seat over there by the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Even if there's a couple of empty tables, it's like, no, no, go over there. <laughs> All right, so you'll manage to nudge them actually in ahead of someone who's actually waiting for a table using some of your oh they made a reservation voice or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. and uh you'll get a little two-person table with an extra chair pulled up to it against fire code but who cares at this point is this an advantage place where they can watch so leading into the scene i'm going to do my slip away um new moon gift okay um that's the one where Anybody who perceives or interacts with the Rock of Aldous Facet is active finds it extremely hard to remember her presence. Sounds good. So that's just one 
essence and it's instant for one scene. Um, and as you walk in, actually, you will uh, notice that in the sky above, uh, almost completely blanketed by clouds, uh, is a hanging crescent moon. That would have been Val's moon tonight. Mm -hmm. You're led into that table. You slip away, metaphysically, hiding yourself from all but your pack. What does everyone else do? Is anybody using any gifts as they watch? Is anyone just trying to observe? I don't know what the heck mine do. Which ones do you have? I have all doors locked. Okay, that gives, that gives <laughs> oh, you control shit. of the building. Maybe don't do that. No, um, <laughs> entropy's toll. That destroys items. <laughs> um, Totem's wrath, which is not one I want to use right now at all. Um, and then I had banish and totemic empowerment. So Totemic Empowerment gives your totem a body. And Banish is... Uh, banish, a right. It's a right that forces a spirit across. Yeah. Depending on it, that takes a while to set up. Yeah. And it depends how infected a person is, whether or not mm. that will even work. And then there's whatever my Half Moon one first level is. Uh, one detects lies. And... Uh, sent beneath the surface uh, allows you to detect if people are being deceptive or truthful. Mm, okay. Does anybody else need to know any of their gifts before we go? Okay. No. no. As you're sitting there, I'd like all of you besides Brighton to make me a a wits and empathy roll. Um, I have a specialty detect lies. Is that relevant? That is not relevant to this. Body language? Body language would be relevant, actually. Okay. One success. Okay. Good job. Brighton? Yeah. I was just going to say, as an aside, I forgot that I have the merit of tolerance for biology. Oh, so, so stuff doesn't gross you out? Yeah. That's, that's going to be useful for tonight. Yay! Yay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to have you do me a roll just so that you don't feel left out. Can you give me a, let's say, composure plus dexterity, which is the waitressing roll? <laughs> that's fair. Add some intelligence in for memorizing stuff if you're that one waitress who never writes it down <laughs> and always gets it right somehow. Those, those most terrifying alphas in existence right there. <laughs> you, so you will manage to keep an eye on the situation while still managing to perform uh, many duties. Uh, Estella finally goes back to her, her work and... Uh, I'll tell her I'll take that back table uh, so she doesn't have to deal with it anymore. She can have one of mine. If he tips... You can have it. Oh shit, go nuts, girl. <laughs> I for, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to add a little plus one next to Estella because she likes you better than she used to. Um, good job. You can buy her affection. <laughs> Fair. The rest of you are watching, and you can see that this creature is, this man, is being served over and over. The tab at his table, just as long as you've been there, has to be two three hundred dollars worth of food on the table and you see them pull plates away and how much he goes into each dish every drop of ketchup between meals as you're there you'll actually see him furtively look around as this last plate is pulled away and he waits for his remaining food and he grabs a bottle of ketchup and raises it aloft and starts to squeeze it into his open mouth. Ugh. He sucks at it. Pulling the plastic inside with a deep inhale. Ugh. There 
with that role, there's a desperation to his actions. Not just hunger, there's something else there. There's something more desperate than just being hungry. Like, he's trying to... It's like he's trying to race something. You got one success? Mm -hmm. Two. Maybe he can outpace how hungry he is. It's like... A... Watching him eat is like watching a man trying not to drown. The ketchup bottle goes empty. <clears throat> He pops its lid off and runs his thick tongue along the inside of the rim of the ketchup bottle, drops it to the ground. VHP sauce is next, and, and it's gone. The food hasn't come yet. He starts to tremble. He reaches forward, grabs one of the salt shakers. Is it gonna? And he's desperate enough that when he raises it up, it's one of those glass ones with the metal tops. Oh, no. He bites the top off. Oh. Glass crunches into his lips, and you can see a fleck of blood. Can we kind of do something? Like now? Now? Kate's going to stand up and then <laughs> um, <laughs> go and start heading over. I would like to go stealthy. Okay. So I'm basically trying to be unnoticed at this point. Sounds good. Or at least blend in. So we know this is a spirit. You probably told us this. It's something. It's something. It's something. If it is, do I? Can we? Have any of us heard of this before? Sometimes spirits reach across and they claim people. Yeah. One uh, thing you will notice as you're approaching is that he's sitting at a table. Yeah. Um, so is the booth in the back, right? Is what I said. Mm -hmm. uh, does this actually have booths? I actually didn't check. He does now. It's uh, definitely it, a shadowy corner because you said, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that one, right? That's a booth right there. <laughs> uh, here. Here you go, guys. Uh, it's super impressive. It's the... Uh, it's important that you know. <laughs> that. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So right next to the Paps Blue Ribbon sign is this little blue corner and he sits in it like a fat spider e. <clears throat> you can actually see that the the bench seat beneath him is straining from his weight doesn't look like it can take much more yeah we gotta stop this like now um 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 so you're going stealthy you said yeah okay are you doing anything specific specific either of you do you need me to roll stealth for this? No, in this in this crowd. I don't think these are relevant merits, but I'm trying to remember what the hell embodiment of the firstborn did and what Moonkiss did. Uh, embody Moonkiss means that you Moonkiss have a skill seven. that ha one skill gets uh, is it eight again? Mm -hmm. And one gets no ten again. I thought it was nine. Nine, it's nine yes. again then. Nine and again. then the other one is embodiment of the firstborn, which yeah. gives you. Uh, it's something ridiculous because I know it's, it's, it's pretty great. Hold on. Um, you can buy an attribute up to six. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Cool. And there's something uh, you can draw upon your bearing to cow an opponent. When you spend a point of willpower, anyone who tries to attack you gains the shaken condition. I will just make note I've got fading, which is a merit that your character has a kinship with the shadows and. Um, this compounds with each person who does not see her. Basically, I'm not going to make you roll for for being stealthy in a bar right now. Mm -hmm. Because you're in Hishu, you also have sheep's clothing on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with all of that stacking, like, I'm not looking for you in particular right now. Okay. I just, each and, time an individual fails to notice your character, all future attempts in that same scene suffer cumulative minus one. Cool. Just so that's out there. It's good to know. Make um, sure I know that when we're actually outside of the bar, because that will probably be a lot more advantageous to you. Okay. You're right. Okay. Um, yeah, Kate's gonna go up and uh, approach and be like, "Hey, hey, uh, you're a uh, look look pretty hungry, there, buddy." Uh. Hey, uh can yeah. I, can I can I help you? Yeah. Uh. Well, more like I think I can I can help you probably just um. If you just if you just come out back, there's we've got some more stuff that you can for you to eat. 
It just, it's, the order's too big to bring it to you. Can you do me a favor? <laughs> <laughs> and you make me a manipulation plus subterfuge roll. Can I do presents by any chance? You're trying to twist words around and confuse him. I know, I'm trying, hopefully. <laughs> Was hoping, but yeah, okay. Manipulation and subterfuge. You can spend a willpower. I sure will. Right. At least your manipulation isn't terrible. It's a pretty terrible manipulation. I'm just hoping this thing's out of it enough that. <laughs> uh, or is desperate enough? Is it subterfuge? Okay, and that. Uh, I'm really banking on the desperation here. One. Yeah, I've success. seen all the success. I rolled one dead. What's it? Okay, so this would be versus his uh, probably wits and subterfuge as well uh, with minus three. Let's find out what that is. Yeah. I think you can also use empathy for detecting lies. It's like... I'm going to go with that because it's better for you. Okay, cool. Is that a success? <laughs> that is not a success. The, what do you mean? A, a, do, mean you, a, you just ordered like a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, there's, 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 there's this little table. You can bring it out here. And there's so many people. It's going to take a long time for them to bring it all out here. You just want me out of here, don't you? What? Oh? But, I mean, you've been taking a... I mean, you, you got a lot of food here, and it's going to be easier for the wait staff as well. So, yeah, just, like, come through this door. He'll yes, get right up, and as he does, the girth of his <laughs> of his distended <laughs> belly, which is sticking out of the bottom of his button-up shirt, is actually going to tilt the bar, or pardon me, tilt the table a bit as he gets up, hmm. and he is going to stumble forward. And as he does, you can almost not hear it over the din and the music, but you swear you hear a slight snap as he stands up. Hmm. If you weren't sure, you think the bone in his calf just snapped under his weight and then reset. Ooh. He stumbles a bit and then writes himself. Ugh. What? Yeah, just, um, is the door even big enough for him? Um, he, he's still Easy. very soft okay. fat. Okay. Um, but he, he will push through. He honestly, his entire body looks like a pimple at the moment. Like mm -hmm. he's the original man was probably about 150 pounds Ooh. and probably about five foot eight. He looks, he oh, looks Jesus like, Christ. honestly, he kind of reminds you of Rick Moranis, an accountant, something benign. And now he's all like a balloon. He stumbles toward you a bit and plucks a fleck of glass out of his lip. Ew. And then puts Ooh. it back in his mouth and chews. That's not food! The... What, is... what is Claire doing? Um, she doesn't want to overwhelm the situation quite yet. Rather, overwhelm the... Yeah, situation. Um, so she's hanging back, but keeping a really sharp eye on them. Okay. That sounds good. So he follows you into the kitchen, or into the back room. Where? Are yeah, you I was trying to head out. Like, if there's a back door entrance. Actually, anything. there's an exit right next to that door. Does it take you to a we back just alley? Saw. <laughs> uh, it does go right behind where uh, I'm going to say the parking lot is. Perfect. That sounds like a fine place to go. It's like a parking lot for the manager and like the delivery truck. Yeah, Be so hopefully slightly Vancouver. more isolated. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. so he will follow you outside. What? Guys! <laughs> oh, yeah, Claire um, will follow him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, I'll follow yeah. all stealthy to hide out there. Yeah, plus you can hear him go what unnoticed, saying. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you will be able to, I'll say you're able to duck through the door before it shuts. Okay. Uh, Claire, you are making your way across, so you'll probably have a moment where the door will shut and then you'll follow it out okay. again. I'm pulling a, Stella, I need to take a break. <laughs> just leaving. <laughs> Fair. Wait, staff. It happens. It does. Hey. <laughs> Everybody who's work service knows exactly what this is. Okay. All right. Uh, so you all trail out into the back alley and he looks around. Can... What? 
Can I use do my hunter's aspect thing? Uh, yes, you may try to, of course. Okay, so we were saying it was a... My so it was your power stat, so probably presence. And I want to go Eight. unnoticed by him. Okay. So, so I want you to stealth? make me a dexterity and stealth roll. Okay. okay so and I do have plus. a bonus, I think, because I have hiding in plain sight as a... Sure. That'll basically allow you to step next to a dumpster and kind of just hide in the shadow there. Yeah. Uh, what skill would this be? What are you doing to invoke it? Uh, so this one, which which ability is this? Or which um, which aspect is, is yours? It's the one that causes, that invokes the isolation, isolated stat. So it's probably intimidation. Yeah, I've got a dot on that. Presence and intimidation, presence and... I, yeah, I got presence five. Nice. Okay, presence And then five. it's um, uh, renown. Yep. So honor. I think. Your yeah. honor. It's always your awesome renown. Yeah. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. I just wanted to focus could for a moment. Spend another back. willpower. <laughs> How many spots should I spend another willpower? I have okay, finally that stopped. <laughs> How many successes sure. did you get? Seven. Jesus. Well, Which, is that a beat, by the way? Uh, actually, I have to double check because we did that in a LARP. Because except, based on exceptional. Yeah. Whoa. Many dice. Yeah, that was nine dice. Ten. Should have said three. Yes. Uh, okay. Two. Two successes? Two. All right. So you will place that condition. That's the isolated condition, yes. correct? Okay. So, um... They cannot benefit from any teamwork roles. Um, they can't take advantage of the defense reduction for multiple attackers. Okay. Every enemy has access to its full defense. Oh, wow, really? Faces has access to its full defense, no matter how many times he's been attacked in a turn. Yeah, every and so we all have our full defense. Okay. Um... The resolution is suffer a wound penalty from lethal or aggravated wounds or suffer a lethal wound in your character's last box. Hmm. Just checking on that beat thing right now because I can't remember if you get it for exceptional. I know you get it for dramatic failures. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we always have our full defense. Okay, um, so just leave a note that you have an exceptional success, and I'll double check that. Okay. Because that's the one that I, I think you no longer do. Okay, because yeah, it would be the second one of the of the night. Really? Well, because I rolled five <laughs> earlier. Wow. No. Okay. Um, okay. Exceptional success. Different scenes, but still. Sounds good. So you have two of those. All uh, right. So you are going to step out and evoke that isolated condition, mm-hmm. and he's going to suddenly get very very nervous. Mm-hmm. What are you? Look, lady, I don't have any money. What are you? Look, I just gotta eat, okay? I gotta eat. If I don't eat, bad things happen. Okay? What I happens? Don't... Start talking. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody anymore. Then don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Kate's a bit of a bitch. Um, In the alleyway here, you're out there. The the back door is going to open again, and Claire is going to step out, followed quickly by Brighton. The metal door slams. The man's eyes grow wide, and suddenly you're going to hear... Something titters over by the dumpster. A host of crows that were picking through the refuse suddenly start to squawk and caw. (laughs) Manic. And uh, why don't we go ahead and let's do an initiative roll because I think that's where we're headed right now. Uh, So initiative in this system is roll me a d10 and then add your initiative modifier. Cool. 
reminder that your initiative modifier changes if you were using a weapon while you were holding that weapon, and that was almost great. Tens do reroll on this. Um, so if I pick up, say, like, is there like a tire iron or a rock or like anything? There's definitely branch, a rock. A rock is a minus one. I have improvised weaponry. Cool. I don't suffer improvised penalties at all. No. Oh, not for... Um, well, this is just a speed reduction. Oh, what? So your speed fluctuates with weapons because it takes an extra second to swing it. Oh, okay. But you suffer no penalty for it being improvised. Oh, okay. So it will okay. do a plus one lethal damage. All right, cool. Uh, so, but my, so for initiative, what does that do? It reduces it by one? It reduces it by one while you're holding the rock. Oh, okay. It's something in the mechanics that I no game I've ever played in has actually used. Hmm. So I thought I'd give it a try and see if, it, if I liked it. Sure. Uh, and I'm just going to check the initiative right now. I said that... Uh, so what was it? It was... I'm just going to write Eater. Initiative was Dexterity plus Composure. All right, so who has above 10? Uh, yes. Me. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, above 15. 14. 13. 14. Okay. Um, let's see. And what do Brighton and Kate have? I have 11. 11 as well. And who has the higher modifier? Mine is... Well, with the penalty, um, I had three for initiative, so I guess plus two, and is that how we do it, or we deduct it off the... Does so your you... modifier be plus three anyway? Oh, three, then in that case, yeah, 12. Yeah. It's just Mine, speed penalty. Mine's five. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. So Kate, yep. and then we got Brighton. Sorry, just getting used to new character names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and then Claire, what do you have? <laughs> Ten. Ten? Okay, that's definitely... Going to beat his nine, and yeah. and there we go. But those guys get to act first. Do I get a beat for resolving the aspiration? Get in a fight? Uh, hey, I yeah, have that too. <laughs> Anybody who has that aspiration <laughs> may may take a beat. Oh, I forgot to update my initiative. I actually have fifteen. I don't need new Sorry, I raised my decks and didn't that, remember to raise. You know what? That's totally fine. The crows still get to go first. Cool. All right. And then Eater. I'm just going to write Eater because uh, I don't have his first tongue name on this page with me. That's fine. All right. As you step into the alley and he looks at you, the crows begin to get violently angry. They take to the sky and they are going to descend upon you. Uh, let's see. So you are the one that's directly in front of him. Mm -hmm. So what I need to know is what is your defense? My defense is... Close to dexterity for with us. Oh, add plus athletics. Oh, yes. So, um, three. 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 Um, also, I want to remind you of one final thing that has never been added to uh, any <laughs> game I played of this because it's one single sentence. When you are in Garu form, no skills may add to your base defense. Hmm. Pardon me, um, of your prey. Your prey does not get to add their athletics against you because you instinctively know where to step to kill them. Nice. All right. Uh, the crows are going to swarm you, uh, but aren't able to find purchase. It's they they angrily scratch and tear at your skin and your shirt, trying to eat you. Their eyes are glazed over with hunger, and the rain falls around you. And now we are Megan. What do you do? Um. Can I try and figure out anything about this? What this likely is from what I've seen? How we can combat it? There are several ways. Uh, what you can do is you can make me a wits and occult roll. Okay. Or int and occult, depending on uh, either right. way it works. Actually, int and occult to see if you've ever heard of anything like this before. That's a minus one, then. So you still get to roll one dice. Just okay. And you get to get a dramatic failure, you can get an extra beat. You could have one power. Oh, you were fine. Yeah, one success. <laughs> yes. Was it a ten? No, it was an eight. Okay, so on a on a chance dice, it's only as a ten or a one. Uh, oh, really? Were, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Would I you have spend have... willpower knowing that? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll allow this because I didn't outline that clearly, and mm -hmm. we haven't played World of Darkness in months now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead so and spend willpower. So willpower you'll... adds three. Yeah. So you'll be you'll roll one more dice. Okay. So I just want to. You just roll two dice total. Yeah. Okay, so I had an eight. We just roll one more dice than they originally counted. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it out if I remember. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, so one success. Yep. 
Uh, it's likely a spirit of hunger. Okay. That's infested him. At this point, it depends whether or not he is just claimed or ridden. He appears to have some type of control remaining, which means that you think that he is just mostly... He could definitely be urged, but the physiology of his change, he's... It's up to you whether or not you believe he's too far gone. Spirit conditions generally function kind of like a Jenga tower, though. If you're able to before it's set in place permanently knock out one of the lesser stages you can bring down the entire possession however it looks like he's pretty far along to the point where his mass is hurting himself yes he's basically barely conscious so this is a tragedy but you can't really think of anything else to do aside from probably kill it now, right now the back alley of the area is big enough for a loading truck to back up into it is also large enough for two cars. It's roughly, probably 20 feet wide by about uh, about 15 feet wide. Mm. And uh, on the back you can see that it has a low wall that leads into the next alley over. Uh, that's about 10 feet off the ground and <clears throat> is rain, or the top of which is ringed by, um, by a chain link fence part that is long since damaged mm -hmm. and uh, beyond that there's a dumpster right next to you and the only way out of the alley is by going straight back toward the main road uh, it is raining and uh, what would you like to do i will work myself around so that i'm between all of this and the main road okay so you'll block his exit from that way stealthily okay so you'll just move over there um i will use your, your seven successes will work just fine for that okay he also uh, now has a negative one to perceiving me. Okay. Because he hasn't uh, already. There is one par car, uh, parked car. It mm -hmm. is the manager's car. Uh, it is a Prius. Oh. It is beige. Mm -hmm. The most boring car in existence. <laughs> okay, sorry. I just doodled out the, uh, the range there. Okay, so you have moved over there. Brighton, what do you do? Um, I would like to... Can we, we, we can inflict multiple uh, aspects on, right? I believe so. Okay. I haven't read the page that says differently <laughs> yet, so we'll then go with it. I would like to, actually, no, I, I want to try and inflict my aspects. All right, so what aspect is this? Uh, monstrous. Oh, this is the one where they're in So it a... inflicts resigned, <laughs> um, which if I succeed, um, the, or... The character faced down as hunter, and the frightening beast has shown him the essence of doom. While he may still fight or flee, there's a part of him inside that welcomes the release of death. Your character, uh, so the person this is inflicted on, may not spend willpower to add dice or resistance um, for any action to defend himself from a deadly threat. He can fuel gifts or other or use other actions, but his self-defense becomes lackluster at best. Okay, I have the resign card in front of me, so let's do this. Yeah, let's see. So I'm using... Excited? I'm using um, yeah. <laughs> uh, strength and athletics to just kind of like essentially jump down into the into the back alley from where the back door is and sure sounds good be like threatening <laughs> sounds good one success one success all right so you will inflict that condition on them uh, as you leap out and block uh, block him from backing up into the Prius yeah. And basically just kind of bump him a bit forward. Yeah. He's surrounded now. Kate, you are standing at the back door, which shuts behind you. With a... That was unclear, but yeah. that's okay. Oh, sorry. Kate, we made eye contact. Is... <laughs> sure. Yeah. You can actually so. see the eye contact. You can see know. the eye contact now. Yay. Cool. Because <laughs> okay. I used to be looking over there. <laughs> so, okay. So, would we have the information from them from the Intima cult? They no. didn't they didn't say anything, so Oh dang. Okay. Um, I'm too focused on staying stealthy. You can make the roll. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I'll allow it as a free action. It's the first game. Oh thank you. So it's like oh I'm a little reaction though. Reminder, it's a point of essence to shape shift. And uh, or a full action at this level. <laughs> Oh, okay. How many is that? Hold on. A 
But just two. Just two. Um, probably a hunger spirit. You'd say that he's on the verge of being completely claimed if he isn't claimed already. Um, so he's... It's, 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 it's a mercy at this point. Okay. Um, you said you're in the back alley, right? Yep. I want to see if there's a broken bottle. Uh, there is most definitely a broken bottle. Oh, shit. Uh, it, Perfect. It, um, you have, you have I also have improvised block. weapon. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I love it. Huh? You both have improvised weapon because you're too cheap to buy real weapons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you're always... They're always armed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. these these two have that. I have shiv. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can I swipe it up and run at him, or you absolutely can, yeah. Okay, swipe it up. That's the weirdest drink I've ever had. All right, you are going to rush forward. Yeah. So let me see. So let me ask my dual power to just resistance. Okay. So I take my normal defense. Let me just flip to that page. Uh, All right. So um. You are going to rush up at him, and he is going to have, uh, I need you to make me a weaponry plus strength roll. Are you going to sh- actually make it- shift into dollar, maybe? Maybe. What do you, um, you know, honestly, if you shift into dollar, your claws will do a lot more damage. Than- and is that weaponry or brawl? It's brawl. Okay, let's maybe do that instead. And so by the way, like, yeah, improvised weapon isn't going to be for all. Okay. So, yeah, and by the way, if any of your stats don't work after this first session, we can mm-hmm. retool you a little bit. It's mm-hmm. fine. Okay. So go ahead, spend an essence to shift up into Dalit. Okay. All right. So Claire s- rushes forward, shifting up her clothes, straining at the seams. Mm-hmm. And uh, give what I need you to do is uh, you give me a strength plus brawl. Roll. Remember that your strength is increased in Dalu by one, and this creature has a defense of five. So you subtract that from your dice pool. You are looking for one success. Okay. Every additional success is another point of damage that rolls over. Can I spend willpower? Yes, you may. <laughs> okay, let's try. Also, don't forget any of your gifts because I believe you got extra health Ooh, levels. I do. And I don't remember how many though. It, the place I went to didn't tell me. Um, uh, it's equal to your purity. You get extra health levels equal to your purity. Okay. All and right. sorry, what's hard rage? Hard oh, rage? Oh. Uh, that is when you enter death rage. Oh, okay. Can I use primal strength? Uh, primal strength is a... Add purity to strength. Let me just double check. You can need to spend an essence. Uh, you spent an essence to shift into Dalu. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can do one or the other at this because you only have Primal Urge 1, right? Two? Uh, primal Urge 2, I think, only lets you spend one per round. No, Louis. You're done. Actually, yes, you can. Um, you can spend two a turn at Primal Urge 2. Nice. You may do both. I suggest you do so. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's see. And you subtracted five? Yes. Okay. All right, let's do this. I had a good pool and then I did. And then you had a great pool. All right. And then I did strength. Yep. Most definitely did. Or else it would have been way better. But at least I got one. <laughs> I'm just really bad at rolling. All right. If you haven't noticed. It's okay. Christine makes up for us all. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So rushing forward. Start feeling bad. <laughs> Shh. Don't feel bad for being a winner. <laughs> I start all worrying that people to are going to be watching thinking I'm cheating the whole time. You're not because we can see. I can see your rolls from here and they're stupid. All right. So uh, you rush forward um, raking your claws along his front. Um, you are going to rip through the first layer of skin, and the um, the tissue underneath is going to be hard and like clotted cheese. Mm. You will rip into it, yeah. and you'll deal two points of lethal damage, but something resists it. Mm. His flesh feels almost armored by that padding. Mm. Your claws sink in, but not deep enough. Kate. 
Um, I'm just trying to pack dynamics. What? Because I'm trying to figure out what our teamwork actions are. Mm -hmm. Page 162, it says. Oh, Zelda. Mm -hmm. Uh, pack dynamics. Because I've got the, the merit pack dynamics at. Three. 162 of the world book? Yeah, 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 I think so. You mean teamwork? Yeah, teamwork, because I got packed dynamics. So what are the teamwork actions? Uh, when two or more people work together, one person takes the lead. They're the primary actor, and they assemble their dice pool as normal. Anyone assisting rolls the same pool before the primary source. Each gives the primary actor a bonus dice. So they we could do that for taking down something, right? Yes, you can. So basically what you do is you say, like, I go to help. So I do, like, a strength and brawl roll, and all of my successes get added to uh, Brighton's pool. Yeah. And then Brighton rolls with that huge pool and hopefully gets tons of successes. Okay. So if I say, like, I'll distract him. Yeah. It then... doesn't have to be a combat roll. It can be a distraction roll or something. So long as it makes sense. someone else can get a benefit to attack. Yeah. If I distract. Yeah. So you could do uh, a distraction roll. You could do an athletics yeah. roll to try okay. to, like, brush into him to distract him from behind. Yeah. Or... Okay. Yeah, anything because like that. this gives me a plus... What did I do? I did five dots on it? Yeah. So I get a plus three... I have a plus three on my dice rolls. Okay. Yes. Da, 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 da. Continue to complement their action with ease. Anytime she participates in teamwork action, just serious or other three for question or yeah, constructively. So I would get plus three to kind of. So what do you do? Um, I'm gonna have to rock at it. All right. Ooh, so go ahead. This block. is gonna be a uh, a strength plus athletics roll. Uh, Minus improvised weapons, weaponry. Uh, if you're throwing it, it's a ranged weapon. Oh, so there's it? no. Well, there's... I would have to like I could I would move up and like hit it if that's the way it would work. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. so you can use weaponry or athletics. I would use weaponry because I have okay. improvised weapons. You're just hit that. And then oh. I have I both have a skill improvised weapons and then I have the merit improvised weaponry. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So um, you, it has a defense of four right now. Yeah. So strength, okay, I've got strength three. And are you doing ahead. this in Hishu? In your human form, or are you going to spend an essence to shift up? Mm, if there's no penalty to shift up, then... And Just the essence. And I'll, yeah, I'll spend Eight. an essence to get right. a plus one on my strength. Damn straight. <laughs> um, you could also so choose to de deny yourself defense by all-out attacking for another plus two. Sure. Yeah, because you're literally right behind him. Why not just, like, hit him with a rock? Yeah, just gonna hit him with a rock. Okay, so plus two. Okay, and I've got four for strength, and then I'm using improvised uh, weaponry, and I have get I have specialty. So I think I'm rolling eight dice right now. Nice. Cool. After his uh, defense, great. Oh wait, I did defense reduces. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so then that's four. Okay. Minus four for defense. All right. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're at you're at what's your strength? Uh, strength is four. Okay. So that, I think I'm just rolling four dice right now. So that negates right there. And then what's your what's your weaponry? One. Okay. And I have the. And then you all at attack. A specialty from improvised weaponry, and then I all at attack for plus two. So I should have four. You should have six. Six? Where's the other two? Well, because you have strength. You have strength four. Yeah. And his defense is four. Yeah. So you all at attack, which is plus two. Yeah, you you've added, added, added extra. Yeah, you, you added, added two. Extra. She already minused her four out. Yeah. Okay, so I've got strength. Yeah. yeah. Improvise or improvise specialty. Yeah. Your weaponry. Yeah. yeah. Your all at attack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So minus four of that for four. defense. You added all at attack twice. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really <laughs> as all cool out as attack. I could. Yeah. You were like <laughs> as cool as that is. And then oh all attack. no, I added plus three because you said you had the teamwork bonus that gives you a plus three on teamwork actions. That's what it is. Yeah, Three. I knew there was, so it's actually, yeah, my it was math all, was still wrong. The but attack it was, part was the part so that you, I needed to figure out what I was doing So you I have seven, else. but this, do, this will not inflict damage. This inflicts a bonus to the next pool. Yes. Is the way that it works. So the three plus three... The pl by taking the plus three, this is not a damaging action. Okay. This is a distracting action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that someone else will get... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, things. like, this, this will not hurt him, but it will add to yeah, not, player's I'm, pool. I'm, oh, great. Oh, hey, that's awesome. Oh, wait, Brighton's pool. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wait, have you active? No. I, not, not second time. 
Oh. Are you after me? Slightly? All right. Um, so should be before you. Oh. Then you should go before me. Because well, you you had ten, right? Yeah. And then we both had eleven, but she had the higher modifier. Oh, third, yeah. I should have actually had twelve technically, but oh, I, I realized it too. So the initiative that I have right now is I have yeah. the crows, I have Megan, I have Brighton, I have Kate, I have Claire, and then I have the guy. So you should have actually. Okay. So I think I swapped one of you in the initiative because I'm getting used to your name still. Yeah. Okay. So who has no. not acted this round so far? I think you should act. I think you I, I did my my hunter's aspect, but I don't know if that was this round or if it was oh. if we've restarted. No, that was right beforehand because you that's that's what confused me. Yes. So that's fine. So basically, just let um, let Amy do the roll first, yeah. and then get a massive bonus on your roll. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna just charge up like a Saiyan. It's fine. I'm gonna smack it. Would anybody <laughs> like to to try this monstrosity? Yes, I will in a second. Uh, quick question. For um, I'm looking at my new moon gift of eviscerate. Okay. Uh, yes. And it they activate this facet as part of brawl or weapon attack against an unaware or surprise opponent. Would does that mean they're unaware of me? Or unaware of the fight in general. They lose the element of surprise once they're in a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it's game one and you are invisible in a corner, so I'm willing to allow it for this guy. Okay. So on that note, I did not actually know a, sorry, about the... Well, I probably knew, but I didn't twig. The spending of essence okay. for shifting. So could I have shifted on my first turn? Absolutely. Oh, actually, you know what? All you did was like hide. Yeah. You could just say that was your standard action. Okay. So you can either. I spend... wanted to shift into Urshel. Sure. Oh, great. All right. So Amy, how many did you get? Four. Four. All right. And Bro three tens explode. <laughs> is it? It's a carbonated marshmallow. It That's is the... disgusting. Yes. <gasps> Pass it down to Caitlin. Caitlin needs to try this. Try this. Oh boy. Oh my I, god. I picked up an energy drink that's marshmallow flavored for this game, and yeah. it is the worst thing in the world, but I also slightly to good. This. <laughs> Right? It needs some alcohol mixed in with it. Oh, God. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, do I not? That's just sugar. Oh. That's pure but sugar. There's, but there's no sugar in it. tastes it. weird. The smell It's a weird tasting first. sugar. It kind of no, I tastes think... like um, one of those uh, lip balm smells like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Or oh, God. I think <laughs> I will stick to lip uh, balm candy. Yeah, My. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right, with that. Energy drinks in the uh, future. All right. Uh, yes. Kate, you're going to step up and slam a rock into the back of him, propelling him <laughs> forward into Brighton. Um, I'm going to pull out my shiv, <laughs> which is a punch dagger. Why does the game always go this way? <laughs> and I'm going to use um, my street fighting merit. Uh, <laughs> the chat is asking if we're in a fight. We are in yeah. a fight. Oh, yeah. 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 Which um, I'm, I'm going to use knocking the wind out, so I'm going to take a shot to the center mass. Okay. And um, if I'm if my attack is successful, the opponent suffers a minus one to his next roll. That sounds great. So you gave I'm, me four, right? Well, I have, yeah, I had four successes. So. And then did I just give four extra dice to? Gives four extra dice. Yeah. Oh, brawl. sweet, nice. And then strength and well brawl, done. I'm guessing. Well done, Amy. The strength and brawl. Okay. Um, actually, you're using a shiv, so it'd be strength and weaponry. No, it has to be a brawl skill. Does but. It? But Shiv counts as... Oh, it does? Yeah. So I guess it's because it's so small, right? Yeah, what it is it is... A um, it's a punch dagger. So, oh. your character carries small, concealable weapons for use in a tussle. Rolls to detect the concealed weapon, suffer your character's weapon, you skills mm -hmm. a All right, let's do it then. But you may use the brawl skill to use this weapon. So I have a defense of three right now, because you guys have been ganging up on him. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I will use a weapon. Who's that? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the thing does. It means that you all, oh, yeah. your yeah, defense doesn't go down. Has he taken, let me see. He has not taken lethal damage yet. Yeah. So it is still up. One, two. Yeah, I cannot take advantage of the defense reduction from all the attackers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, which is then, okay, there we go. His defense does not change based on isolated. Oh, okay. It goes down every time one of you hits him. Oh, okay. Which is it's one of the our defense that saves stays the, the same no matter how many people are fighting you. Okay, cool. All that's right, cool. That's really yeah, one success. <laughs> okay. And uh, did you switch into? Did you sh shape shift no. at all? Okay. So you're going to go back to work after this. this. No, no, that's, no, fair. that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, quick question, and that is, uh, what is your? So the shiv is a zero. Um, I, I have the level two version, so it's a one lethal. 
All right. You are going to stab into his mass, and as you do, the knife is going to become embedded in that cheesy, cottagey girth, Ooh, and you're going to feel his flesh wrap around your hand. Ooh. Oh, lovely. And Claire, you have already gone, because I skipped initiative on you and jumped so you up to slash him. Their enemy. So I'll okay, I've only gone once so far. This is still the first round. Yes, it's the person. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, I accidentally skipped ahead because I read Kate as Claire and Claire as Kate, and then Brighton was in there somewhere. Oh, okay. Remember, I looked at you and said Brighton. Well, you said Kate, but well, that's, I, I don't know. I say a lot of names. <laughs> All right. I'm so confused. It's yes. It's a learning curve. It's, it's a learning right. curve. It's a new game. It is. Okay. But it is. All right. So with that, that means that you are directly in front of me, though, Brighton. Yep. And uh, with that, I would like to know mm-hmm. what your oh god, it's in control now. Um, mm-hmm. Oh god, this is what werewolf is. I forgot about this. Uh, what is your defense? Five. Five. That's pretty decent. I can't spend willpower to bolster this because no, you can't. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, and I'm not gonna all out attack because that would be stupid. Uh, mm-hmm. I am gonna spend two points of essence, however, and Oops. the cuts up the front of his frame completely heal. Mm-hmm. That's good. And that is great. So uh, armored natural weapon. So he is going to scream with a surprisingly normal voice and is going to quickly lurch forward and bite onto your shoulder. Um, no. His his mouth descends sickeningly and he was actually going to clamp his still human, still flat teeth around the side of your shoulder and pull away a point of lethal damage from you as he rips the meat of your shoulder off. Dislike. Dislike. Um, and with that, he's going to spend the rest of his turn. He's going to step to the side, basically, and push himself against the retaining wall that has the fence atop it. Or does he back towards the entrance, not knowing I'm there? He doesn't know I'm there, blocking the Okay, so you went right at him. You went right at him. So he's pivoted. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. He's he would, back right he would take me. a step toward you. Uh, and with that, the crows are going to swarm again. Uh, they are around both of you. Uh, Jen, you're going to take a, uh, pardon me, uh, Brighton is going to take a minus one on her next action and is going to take a point of bashing damage as crows begin to peck at her. Okay. Uh, Megan. Okay. Um, oh. so I'm going to use, I think, Eviscerate, which gives me the rope quality on a brawl or weaponry attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's reflexive of one essence. Okay. Um, and your primal urge is what? One. Okay. So you are in Urshel or Urhan form? You Urshel. are in Dog or? Urshel. Urshel. So you're in, like your, dire, sheet right here. You're in your dire wolf form. Yes. Okay. So you back up and a nearly invisible wolf the size of a small, well, a large pony. And I'm going to do a brawl attack, raking claws. Okay. I guess down at the back. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be my brawl plus strength or so plus it, dex. Uh, so it's always plus strength. Okay. So it's brawl plus strength. Use Don't forget, Urshel has more strength. Yes, that's what I'm looking at right now. He has a defense of five right now. Okay. But you have the rope quality, so that's good. Um, okay, so I've got that. Got my brawl. Got one for raking claws, which is a specialty. You may spend a willpower for an additional three, and you may also, since you're not moving this round, mm-hmm. uh, all out attack. You'll sacrifice your defense if he turns to attack you, mm-hmm. but you'll gain two more dice. So between a willpower and all out attack, you negate his defense. Sure, let's do that. I mean, you might as well. More dice on a rope. And it was two more dice. Uh, for all out attack. All out attack is two more dice. Okay. Willpower is three more dice, and his defense is five. So that's okay. Him. So two, four. So basically, you should have your normal pool. I like to put the pool together completely and then minus out of it, because otherwise I'm going to get confused and Same. forget shit. Same. Yeah. So okay. it's easier if I just build it and then minus. That's totally fair. I've been playing World of Darkness too long, so I've got my own hack for it, and I'm sure Jen does as well. Okay. And what exactly does the rope quality do again? Uh, take everything that succeeds, remove it, and then re-roll everything else. Cool. All failures get one re-roll. Oh, cool. Rote's broken. Okay. Do I re-roll explodes first? You uh, separate them and then re-roll them separately is probably a good way to do it so you don't lose okay. them. 
So how many? So re-roll all the fails first. Yeah. So and then I'll re-roll all the tens. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So how many do you have so far? Uh, hmm. That's just two so far. Two, and then you get to re-roll the tens. Yeah. So that is a total of four. Four successes. All right. So that is going to be... And that is with claws, which are one lethal in Urshel. Plus cool. one lethal. Cool. So that's going to be... Um, all right. Both of your conditions are going to go off because it's going to be lethal. Mm -hmm. uh, you are going to rip through the armor of his skin and deal a significant amount of damage with your claws as you lurch forward and eviscerate along his back. Um, a huge flap of flesh flies open mm -hmm. and he is going to stumble back forward uh into brighton's waiting embrace hi hi <laughs> sorry for skipping you last round now That's we're in normal okay. initiative um i am actually instead of attacking going to use my gibbous moon gift of war howl <laughs> um so cost and essence i roll and maybe add bonuses to everyone else. That sounds good. Now you're doing a war howl in an alley in the middle of a city. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Done. Yep. Let's it's do it. Saturday night. Nobody's seeing me. Oh, it's Saturday, Saturday night. night. <laughs> yeah. Just you're... it's just frat boys, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saturday night behind a pub. We're feeling all right. Let's pretend we're Shakira. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Got two successes. So what does that do? So that's um, it lasts for two turns, hmm. um, and all members of my pack within earshot. Gain a plus one lethal rating on brawl and weaponry attacks for the duration. Nice. That's broken. All right, great job, Kate. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, woo, indeed. So, cinder block <laughs> or claws. I have a brawl. I, have a I mean, you could shift up to Garu and end the fight super quick. But that's your thing. It's everybody's thing. It's everybody's thing. Um, so yeah, right now, because I have sure. to go back to work. <laughs> yeah. That. Are you going to? Yeah. All right. With a, are you spending an essence to do it? Yeah. All right. So there is a sudden shiver, and the sound of ripping fabric, and then behind you, you see the form of Kate surge up into Garu form, the war form, oh, and uh, oh, please do me a favor. Uh, you are going to have a minus three on your roll because oh. I can't use my defense against you. Okay. Um, so that's okay. rough. Okay, so I'm... I have a total defense of three instead of four. Okay. Uh, and then you do what you'd like. Okay, so attack... Um, so I got the plus... Teeth and claws is plus two lethal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do I add anything for teeth and claws or... To my you, no, it goes Just, into damage. Okay. So if you hit, that's auto damage. Okay. So strength is six. You said I get a bonus on. You get it's um plus it's one after. lethal. Okay. So, so it's just yeah. Okay. To your damage. So your claws that. are sharper. Yeah. So then sharp. you're gonna add your brawl. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a minus one. All right, we're gonna buy that up. Yeah. Uh, no, would I you like to. to all out attack? Yes. All right, so that's gonna be. Plus two. Um, I have two willpower left. I could help. I think you should. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, basically your nice. entire pool minus four because of the minus one for Brawl. Okay. And the minus one for the defense. So that's, yeah. Should be, I have seven dice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds right. I'll get used to this eventually. You will. It's been a long time since you played World it's of Darkness. It's so long since I played World of Darkness. I got a single nine. That's great, because guess what? What? You're in Garu form. So that means that you did one, two, three points of damage before I even have to factor anything in, plus what uh, Brighton just did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one, two. All right, so you were going to surge up, and are you biting or clawing? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to claw. You lash a claw down the side of his face, and the flesh rips. You can see that something presses out beneath the skin. Ew. Underneath his face is a second face Ew. that begins to reach out. 
thanks. His nose tears away under your claws, revealing something of a a wide spade shaped snout. Claire. Oh. Um now that it's a different round, can I spend another essence? Yes you may. Do you do the same thing? Uh, yeah. Yes you may. Yeah. Okay. Are you using your strength ability again? Are you using that strength power again? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So two essences? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I am, yeah. Cool. Get uh, strength. His yeah. defense is now two. Ooh, okay. Nice. Um, <laughs> got lost there. That's okay. I'm going to bite him. Uh, that chomp, sounds like chomp, a fantastic. Chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> okay, chomp, so uh, his total penalty is two. Roll me your new strength. I don't want to. Uh, what do I do with living weapon again? Living weapon. You have what rate? What level of that? Four. Okay. <laughs> so what that means uh, you gain a plus one on your bite, and it has one point of armor piercing. Okay. Which uh, actually is very useful in this situation for reasons. And then because is it it's armor got, reasons. It's 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 armor reasons. Armor reasons. Two. Armor reasons. And then I do brawl. And then I do. I don't have enough dice. <laughs> Would you like some dice? Yes, please. Because <laughs> then I have to add the three for purity, and then one for living weapon. Cool. Okay. And, you, and you subtracted two for his defense. I already did. Okay. Are you spending willpower? Not this time. Are you all out attacking and sacrificing your defense? Not this time. Okay. Thanks, though. Okay. <laughs> no problem. But, um, Just trying to see. train you all for more dynamic chomps. Okay, I'm gonna do some dice too. I look at the chat right now. So many dice. Think it's better mm-hmm. for me. Oh, you know what I did? Is that? Oh, I didn't. Oh, well, that's fine. Did you knock one over? I think so, but I can't tell, so I don't care. Good. Because I've got yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, was it, was it the one uh, in the top left corner there? What? Was it the one in the top left top left corner you knocked over? No, because I was still an eight. Okay, I was about to say because that looked like an eight or a ten to me from this angle. Yeah, so. it's still an eight there. Okay, yeah. have you rerolled all of your tens? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have how many successes? Six. And then I give plus one lethal. Okay, so, and then your, what is your bite damage in Garu? It's two lethal or three lethal? Two lethal, but then do I add one because my, my living weapon yes, is Yes, you do. So, so that's, three? So two lethal, Was three that? lethal, ten lethal, eleven <laughs> lethal. So it, ex- it explodes. <laughs> eleven lethal, it's either ten or eleven lethal and one point of armor piercing. So let me just count something real quick. It's <laughs> hell. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, you know, the benefit of this is that I don't actually have to count all of the way up to it to how many dice you <laughs> succeeded with because it ran out of health pretty quick. Um, nice. You are going. Mercy chomp. There is a quick flitter of motion, and Claire swells up into her full war form and opens her mouth showing the sharp, the razor sharp teeth of her Garu form. Mm. The sharpest teeth that you've ever seen in this form come down on this creature's throat, Mm. head. And it's just one bite, one simple savage. And the head tears from the corpulent mass, which collapses to the ground and begins to rapidly decay in front of you. As the head rolls to the ground, it looks up and mouths a final phrase. I'm sorry. And the eyes roll back and something screams back across the gauntlet. The body begins to rot in front of you, and would uh, <coughs> you all like to shift back down into a different form? Yes, please. Yes, please. Instead of just killing each other? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds yes. good. I'm just <laughs> hanging out in <laughs> human. All right. There's a moment of pause as you yeah. shift back to normal. And I realize now that uh, they got rid of the ritual from first edition that allows you to keep your clothing when you shape shift. Yep. Yep. So is that just gone now? Yeah. No. I just, I just realized I'd never read the rule in this book, so I'm gonna 
I was gonna say that with with that, I mean, if we're constantly ripping out of our clothes, by this point we probably figured out some workarounds. Yeah, probably. And like, I'm probably carry one of those little leather backpack purse things. I definitely have a change of clothes in my backpack. Honestly, probably don't invest in bras anymore. Just like support tanks because they're cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> Everything has a cheap ass for bras. All of my clothes are like athletic job, clothes, anyway. yeah. mm-hmm. so maybe I get them mm. to be slightly bigger than they need to be. And mm. at, la- at least if Urschel is like my favorite, it's only one size category bigger. Mm-hmm. Oh, if I was in my business jacket still, I probably would have discarded that if that's. I mean, cool. Yeah. That's probably fair. You probably left it back. <laughs> that's probably the, the most expensive. Part I actually yeah. probably left it behind. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, hold on. I'm just like, checking. It's going down. It's like, uh. You're like, I'm just going to leave this at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would think that we're experienced enough at this point, probably, to have... We've done it a couple times. Oh, okay, times. never mind. It's been incorporated into Harmony. So High oh, Harmony nice. means it shapeshifts with you. Oh, sweet. Nice. Oh, okay. So, um, I will say that your sleeve ripped a little, though, when you dollared up, because oh. it, it's, it's rad that way. Okay. Yeah. All right, so with that, uh, you are uh, suddenly back in the alley again. The back door swings open violently, and... Josh, one of the co-workers. You're a dog out here? Yeah, it was rummaging through the trash. Oh, shit. It looks like it opened a garbage bag there. Oh, fuck. Not my job. He slams the door. <laughs> Looking down at what you see in the dark here, yeah, it sure does look like a giant ripped bag of garbage. Ew. The crows begin to hungrily pick. That's safe. At the body on the ground. I'm gonna. They're helping us clean them up. I was gonna. Yeah. It's not gonna do something to them, is it? What are you all doing? Here's hoping not. I'm gonna clean off my my punch tank and oh, hide it again yeah. and go back to work. Okay. Do you I have will. Uh, water or something? I probably have blood everywhere. Or does that magically? It doesn't magically go away. You still I have. Think you so. still have it all over your mouth. All you look over. like it's oh, smeared well. from cheek to cheek. Mm. I'll, I'll bring you out something. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My yeah. hands are all gross. I'll go and like get a, like a pot of water or something to just bring out to them before I head back to. The body room. is still there. It's not completely rotten. Most of the fat has fallen away. Mm-hmm. The impossible size has started to disintegrate around, and nothing but hundreds of pounds of food lay on the ground. Ew. His stomach has burst open. Ew. Now, no longer reinforced by the spiritual energies. Can I get a wits and composure roll from Ew. everyone who is sticking around the alley? Mm-hmm. I would have to anyway. That's true. Um, oh, so I would also uh, specifically wash my hands that. before going back to work. Oh, good. <laughs> that's, that's good. You don't want to spread this. No. Zero. Zero. Um, no add a pl- yes. Don't forget to always add a plus one when you're in issue for perception rolls. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So just an extra one more yep. dice. You got five again? Uh, nope. Done. None? That's the best. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Alright, so as you just smell rancid flesh, and you Ugh. hear flies beginning to appear somehow in the magic of winter, they find this place. You got how many? Yikes. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing? You kind of catch your breath, and you? Uh, you are going to see that amidst the... The chewed and almost full swallowed enchiladas, the mass of ketchup. You see a human finger. Ugh. And you remember. Hearing, I'm gonna find like a little stick of some sort. Maybe it's a coffee stir in the trash or something, and just kind of poke it and go. Oh. <laughs> What oh, are you doing? Ew! Don't touch ha- it. It still has chunks of flesh Ugh. and a painted nail. Ew! Oh no! Oh shit! Oh, God, Did he eat his wife or something? Oh God! Oh. Or a hooker? The clothing is still. <sighs> the man's still wearing his clothing. Well, at least what parts of it haven't been destroyed by this your attack? Disgusting. I'll fish out his wallet. Okay. He actually lives not that far away, inside of your territory. Well. Mm. Almost. It's just across the way, inside of the ne- neighboring territory of the Blackbirds. Okay. Only a couple of blocks. No. Well, were they one that we like, or like you, us? You have a solid, like, medium relationship mm. with them. 
do we have like somebody in their pack that we could contact and just give a quick heads up hey this guy came from in your territory yeah you, you could probably maybe you want to check his house out here was his address here's kind of what he had you're going to give the hunt to someone else well i don't know is that like the yeah, like you don't follow a hunt with... into somebody else's territory though at least I not mean, without asking permission it, yeah or you do it depends whether or not you want to flex your muscles at them well no. if they're friendly with us then no no we're okay. not in that solid of his position uh, they do have a uh, someone that you know of. Um, it is a, a hunter in darkness named Riley. Mm-hmm. He's um, he's in his mid thirties, uh, a tall man of Afro Caribbean descent, and uh, he's a yeah, he's a have, fellow Araka like yourself. If we have decent like rapport with them, then I would imagine we have a give and take of like. Hey, can we follow something to your territory and then they'll ask us, sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Have that slightly friendly relationship going on? Hopefully. I mean, we'll probably have nasty relationships with a few, so. You do. Sure do. Yeah. You do have his number. Do you give him a call? Sure. Okay. So, stepping under the awning to get out of the rain. I'll emphasize it's just bending. The border a little. The phone rings, and on the third ring, a deep voice answers. Hello? Hey. I don't have caller ID. Who is this? It's Megan. What can I do for you? Uh, we're finishing up a hunt, and the last place to check is just barely across our border. I'll give the address. Do you mind if we follow it? We just want to have a f- final look. Tie it off. I'll Come meet back. you there. Thank you. All right. I'm parked just up the road. I, I probably, as I went back in, sent you guys a text that's like, I'm going to play sick, um, but let me know if we're heading out. Mm-hmm. I'll text back then with the details. As your text buzzes from her reply, mm-hmm. Estella grabs you by the arm. Hey. That fat fuck just ran out of his check. Oh, right. No, that's going to get docked out of my salary. Did you see? You were supposed to watch him. I was out back dealing with a dog that was tearing into the trash. Oh, boo-fucking who? We have busboys for that. Yeah, the busboys were busy clearing off your table. It was supposed to be your fucking table. Look, I'm... Let me go and see if if he's still, like, I don't know, waddling down the street. Jesus. He can't run very fast. Fine. <laughs> I'll take it this, is, this is actually something I was thinking of earlier. <laughs> of if we killed this guy of going and dropping it under the table or something. But with this, maybe I'll just come calmly back in the front door... And go hey to like the host. Hey, um, this dude just left your restaurant with his wa- and dropped his wallet, but he didn't respond when I called after him. Okay. Like here. <laughs> he was really fat. Like. Um, she's gonna reach out and grab it out of her hands. It's fucking lucky. Okay, I've got to go tap this five times. <laughs> Eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give I was actually tip. thinking of that as we went out. I was oh, like, all right, okay, she's going to grab it and this. you save your reputation with your fellow server. Yeah. Uh, with that, um, <laughs> Kate's got you one. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't think these your, things are Your manager behind the bar takes a look at you. You okay? Uh, some dogs tore up some really nasty trash in the back. I'm, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Which is. Look. <laughs> Like you only got a hey, 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 hey. you only got a half hour left. Can you make? Can you, I don't think so. Can you do me a favor? Make me uh, everyone's <laughs> favorite role: a manipulation and subterfuge role. Oh, good! I'm great at those. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, you really are. Uh, can you so give me a plus one because you are covered in sick? Good. From this guy exploding on you. That gives me a die. <laughs> Not a chance die. Good. Oh, I'm gonna good. use willpower. I'm gonna spend yeah. willpower. I have so many. I can spend them on shit like this. You sure can. Ooh. 
Nice. Two successes. <laughs> Two successes. Stay away from sick to Catch yourself out and get out of here when you catch your breath, okay? I don't want you throwing up on anybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. Oh, Leo. What a good manager. <laughs> Yay! Leo the manager. <laughs> I mean, I don't pull stuff like this very often, so. Oh, sure. All right. You've so... built up a good reputation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll cash out and uh, um, head out after these guys. Sounds good. It's only a few minutes before you're able to cash out. And... I'll throw a bag at you and tell you to take your jacket off. Yeah. That's... And shove it in the trunk. <laughs> you gather up and hop in your car and drive your Toss way wet, over. wet wipes at Claire. You probably have like seat covers too, as if you have like a dog that you like in the back seat sometimes. You know the ones I talk about. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Did you have a dog? Yep. Sure, I have a dog. Yeah. A couple. <laughs> sometimes. 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 I, I foster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> what? Uh, that'd be a smart book being a werewolf. Especially when one of your werewolves ain't smart. It's easy to make it to his house. <laughs> you find it very, mm-hmm. very easily. You can even find street parking along the way. It's almost nine o'clock now, and a blue house with white trim and a second floor porch awaits you. The lawn is well manicured, and there's a four stone step rise on the sidewalk leading Ooh. to the front door. You park in a Vancouver residence. It could be anywhere else on the nicer sides of town. Mm. And leaning against the tree out front is Riley. Hmm. He's wearing a Gore-Tex zip-up. And even through it, you can see the tattoos and renowned brands swirling around his collarbone. His shirt is baggy and loose. His hood is up over his kinky black hair. He scratches at his beard and, hey, you made it? Yep. Good to see you. you so too. what do we got here? Well, the father who owns the place was spirit ridden. Exploded. It was forcing him to eat till, well, till popped. Um, but we found uh, what looked like a human female finger in his gut and we wanted to finish off and check off this last bit, see if there's anything here that caused it. Yeah. Well, it's your hunt. I'm just here to make sure you don't do anything in the territory, so you lead the way. Sounds good. Um, I guess. You do have his keys, by the way. Yeah, go to pop into his house, calmly. <laughs> you walk into the front door, and as soon as you walk in... I'm going to look to see if he has like one of those doorbell cameras or any other security stuff he doesn't appear to they're really popular well, you can make me a make me a wits and investigation roll one success looking around you don't believe that you see anything mm-hmm. like that in fact you can see a place where the paint is paler where there was a camera but it looks like it's been removed. Okay. Fairly recently, actually. I'll go in. You head in the front door, and as soon as you step inside, the smell hits you. It smells like... Like a fungal growth, like mildew. Do you all follow? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm, like, right behind. Yep. Yeah. As you step inside, the floor crinkles under your feet, and you realize that the entire front entryway, in fact, the entire floor of this house, has been lined with black garbage bags and plastic sheeting. The living room is through a wide, a wide set of French doors on the right. And as you approach, the doors are shut, but 
a single red handprint has streaked down the glass of one. Mm, all right. Do you open the doors? Uh, with my sleeve. <laughs> As you open the doors, they get about four inches into the room before they start grinding over something. Ooh. And it feels like you're pushing against trash bags full of leaves. Oh dear. If it opens enough, I'll just kind of look, see what it is. The skull of a dog stares up at you. Its eyeball sucked out of its head. The fur and flesh and meat sucked off the bone, but it's still wet. Ooh. A fly buzzes out of the eye socket. That's disgusting. And as you open the door, the, you notice that the room is full of similar atrocities. Cats, birds, raccoons. Ooh, this seems guy has been going for a little while. Yeah. How did this go? How did he get this spirit on him? And how did... How long did it take for this to happen? Like, was this sudden? Did he just consume everything in the span of like, or is it a long time? And then in the corner, mm. you can see a skeleton. Ooh. Broken. The ribs splayed and snapped. The marrow sucked from the bone. Ooh. It's missing several of its pieces. The skull has a large chunk taken out of it, as if someone bit into an apple. Is anyone looking around the scene? Oh yeah. yeah. I would like you to make me, um, I'm going to say in this case, Brighton can choose to make intelligence an investigation or composure an investigation. Everyone else must make a composure plus investigation roll. Is it just composure or what? Composure plus investigation, because it is going to be hard to focus if you can't be composed in this room. I know she's going to use composure because it's higher. Yes, okay. but you have tolerance for biology, so yeah. it's your choice. Composure and investigation gives me two dice. You're going to succeed. I got a single success. I That's, got an eight. Oh, Jesus. If I, I, I have nine again on that skill because of the uh, nice. moon kiss, oh, but shit. unfortunately it did not come in. Six. That. Six successes? I guess yes. more. No, nothing. Nothing? Three successes. And how many did, how many did you get? Uh, how many did Kate get? One? Mm. Glancing around, you can gather that you shouldn't stop in this room. Mm. On a hunch, you step through the side door of the living room into the kitchen. And you can see that there's a large cleaver buried in a butcher's block. The refrigerator is hanging ajar, casting the only light into this room. A shaft of light sticks out of it, obscured by some shape, like something throwing up a shadow puppet. There's something inside of the refrigerator. Mm, go look. You open it up and can see, suddenly, tumbling out, is a woman, part of her, the top. She's older. She looks like she's in her 70s. Her hair is gray and stuck to the side of her face with blood, which is open in a rigor mortis scream of pain. As you glance down, you can see that there is flesh and blood beneath her fingernails. She tried to fight. Back in the room, you look around and you feel the urge to get a breath of air. It's instinctive, and as you take a step, you glance out <clears> the window <throat> into the backyard and can see that there's a large tarp on the ground with a shovel jutting out next to it. And 
one, two, three, five chains attached to posts. Strong posts like you would keep dogs tied to, or cattle, like cattle. Glancing back into the room, you look down and see there are quite a number of large animals here. Mostly dogs. And there, on a table, there's a briefcase. And next to it, a stack of papers, right next to the television. As you flip through the pages briefly, you can see that there are adoption papers from SPCAs. Different SPCAs every day. You think maybe a dozen, two dozen dogs? Dating back to late January. <clears throat> Brighton doesn't pay attention to that, though. She looks down and observes the mass of refuse. But her eyes are only focused on one thing tucked behind the easy chair that faces the television is a wicker trash can. And as you walk over to it, you can see inside is a wallet. It's a girl's wallet, the kind that you would buy at Claire's with a gap. And as you flip it open, it has a BCID of one Katrina Bouchard. And as you lift it, you can see that beneath it are the belongings of at least two other people. Reflexively, your time on the street allows you to uh, maintain your composure enough that you notice that the money has not been liberated from these wallets. You're welcome to take it if you like. Yes. All in all, there's actually about $300 between the three wallets. One of them is a fine leather tooled wallet that looks like it was from a high-end store. Looking through the debris, you can only find the skeleton of one person. But glancing out the window after after Megan steps away, you can easily deduce that he must have buried the bones of what he couldn't digest. Standing by the hallway door that you entered through, Riley looks into the room. I'm going to say this is fucked up. Sorry, I agree I, with you. I'm going to break the tension here. This is fucked up. Yep. Yeah, it is. Agreed. There's not a woman in the refrigerator. Oh. What? I've got like three, three <gasps> the wallets here from people. Yeah. Oh, any ideas? Nice. Um, I'll come back and look. Do you <laughs> show them? Were there any in the other two? There were, actually. Uh, one is for a, uh, a man in his... Uh, a man in his late 30s uh, named uh, Frederick Thorpe, uh, a balding white man uh, with uh, surprisingly piercing green eyes, um, looks like the type of guy who probably works management somewhere, like kind of stocky build, thick neck. Um, as you flip through his wallet, you'll see that he's actually a, a high school physics teacher. And then the other one is a um, is a young woman um, 
quite pretty in that cute uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal kind of like slightly pinched pixie face mm -hmm. um, named Leslie Lusher. And inside of the wallet are a series of uh, cards for a dog walking service. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's there's ideas. One's he's a dog walker, so maybe that was the lure in. Um, I've got a. Uh, Oh God, she's just a kid, um, and uh, high school physics teacher. I'm just gonna hand you the wallets. I'll take a look at them. Oh, shit. I just, I'll show the one for special from the teenagers. Be like, oh hey, we just got a missing poster. We poster. just got a missing poster at work today. Oh, wow. She's been missing for like two weeks. Well. well no. <sighs> I want to remind you as well that over on that table, aside from the adoption papers, was a briefcase that was closed. Okay, I open it then. Okay, walking back over, you open it and you find um, a ring-bound, um, uh, a ring-bound notebook, as well as a number of tax documents. Okay. Uh, the tax documents match the physics teacher's name. Our dude was an accountant, wasn't he? It was. You'll actually find several business cards for a private accountant accounting firm. Mm -hmm. And as uh, as you flip through, uh, the notebook is smeared with handwriting. And as you flip through it, orderly notes to yourself and meeting briefs and appointments blur into something of a diary. Note to self, pick up, pick up more milk, call mom. I keep forgetting to pick up milk, gotta remember. It, from there, ch chronicles losing bits of time and gaining weight. Reminders to, um, in mid-January, uh, join a gym seek a specialist cancer question mark tumor question mark question mark and then at the end just the same words repeated over and over on the margins and much like fuck brad mm -hmm. you see i'm sorry mm -hmm. i'm sorry and as you flip through, the final words in the book are, I'm sorry, I was so hungry. What do you do? Um, with, like, this sort of spirit thing, like, do I think there's probably something that he had in his possession somehow that allowed this to happen? Like, did he pick up something that had the spirit and it was then able to possess him? Or does it... He happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, probably. It's often the wrong place in the wrong time. Okay. What happens is, the ecology of the spirit world, something happens. A thing is born, created, an event happens. This echoes across into the spirit world. So, for example, a couple breaks up. Spirits of loneliness and despair might be born from that. As well as spirits of elation, maybe um, sensuality or lust, if someone's having an affair there. Mm -hmm. These spirits um, are tiny at first, but they start to consume each other. They start to become hungrier. Eventually, they might become hungry and, or maybe victimized by fellows mm -hmm. that they decide to risk it by reaching across to a place where there are no other spirits but itself and where if they latch on to an individual, they can exist in perpetuity. Okay. Mainly, I was thinking like, okay, should check around to just make sure that there's not this can't happen to somebody else immediately by going through his possessions or something like that. No, it should not be okay. able to transfer. It's not to say that it can't, but that's not normally how it does. This would be a rare case. Okay. So by us killing the the host, essentially, it should have been banished back across. It the should have been banished back across, and it should remain dormant for quite a while. Okay. Eventually, it'll come back, but you taught it a good lesson. Yeah, mm -hmm. you did say we felt something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to be sure that that couldn't 
be pulled back. Um, um, otherwise, I'm kind of like, well, we figured we it do? out. I say we yeah. leave it and somebody's going to figure out that they haven't seen their neighbor and call the cops and they're oh, going to call him a serial killer. Uh, I guess so. A psychopathic serial killer. Cause yeah. yeah. He obviously had a mental mm. break and all this shit happened. Yeah. Which, awful, but they'll never find him. He's gone. It's true. They'll trace him to that restaurant and then he's just going to have disappeared into thin air. Will his actions here cause more? Most definitely. Yeah. I'm asking in character, so... Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. And uh, he responds... Riley responds, yeah. most definitely. Does your... Hmm, what's your PAX policy or... I mean, this is your territory, so... Do you guys want to keep an eye on it? I've got a better idea. What's that? Anything you want in the house? Take it. As a thank you for taking care of this on your territory. I'm a little frustrated that this went under my notice. He walks past you into the kitchen. Walks over, grabs the stove, looks at it, and rips it out of the wall, tilting it over. He shifts up into Dalu as he does this. And you can hear the sound... Is he just going to burn the place down? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do you want yeah. some help? You got to love these old houses. Gas everything. All right, let's go. <laughs> Can I assist in destroying this? Yeah. I I'm, sure want to help. I'm going to just go go I, find. I'm going to go see if he has a safe. Can I have yeah, office safe, anything like sure. that? Well, I would like Can well. I assist with Entropy's toll at, uh, at, oh, towards the yes, end of this? Oh, yes, you may. Yes, you may. <laughs> uh, uh, does anybody have science and wants to help me rig a bomb? I do, in fact, I have science. I have jury rigging to help things. Oh, <laughs> you, can, you, can rig, you can rig the lighter. I have two points of science. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so are you looking for a safe point. or are you helping rig the house to, to detonate? Mm. Okay. If you haven't worked it out yet, I'll uh, be able to help you in a minute with uh, making this place blow if you want. I also have demolisher, which helps with like... Yeah. But I'm my more main concern though is just Let's see what we can get to Anything. benefit us yeah. at this point. Okay, so are you looking upstairs, this floor, or basement? Upstairs. I'm going to start on this floor, because this is probably <laughs> where he'd have an office. Okay. Uh, I've got the upstairs. Okay. Um, take the basement. All right. Uh, so I would like er the three of you to roll intelligence and investigation, or wits and investigation, depending on how you're going about this. I would like wits, personally. Then it's wits. Can I spend a willpower? You may spend a willpower. Also, did anybody fulfill their blood or bone? Um, well, mine is Destroyer. So at the end so... of this scene, if you help blow up the house, you're getting a willpower. I can't remember um, what I think I get full are, but... willpower if I send lasting damage, structural damage. I don't remember exactly how mine works, but my bone was Wallflower. So I thought that worked very well with my fading into the background. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. coming out of it, you're, I think it's supposed to be more like assisting or going off independently. A bit more, but I'm not yeah. I'm sure on that. So no, well, it's okay. So give me your um, give me your investigation. Someone keeps re-rolling, and it's it's unnerving me. <laughs> it's Caitlin. Also me. <laughs> and Christine. Yes. I had one re-roll, but okay. I rolled so. a couple tens, so yeah. How many successes did I got four? You got four, four, two. two. At least I'm not the only one. <laughs> You'll head upstairs and in the bedroom you will find um, it doesn't seem like he's slept there in weeks. Mm -hmm. The bed smells awful. And as you're looking around you'll notice something bed looks awful. It looks like the last time he slept in it, he had a horrible nightmare. Maybe even pissed the bed. There's a strange stain in the center. And it does tinge of urine to you as you walk past, but it also tinges of something else. It's musky. And as you look up, you can see there are marks on the headboard. 
like something spherical was dragged up and down the poles of it, grinding into the wood. Hmm. As you glance over, there's a television in front of the bed, and barely visible behind it, you'll see that there's a camcorder on a tripod. Oh. Lovely. Oh, take. I'll take the camcorder anyway. It's. It looks like it was hidden, mm -hmm. where someone. Uh, you barely even noticed it. In fact, it was placed in such a way that as to be innocuous to anyone near the bed. Although that's what it's framing. Yep. You take the camcorder without a problem. Yep. I can... There's anything of actual value on the video, which I'm going to assume there's not, but I'll watch it anyway. Um, I can pawn it after that. Okay, that sounds good. Um, that's about all you're going to find up there, aside from um, you'll find some loose money, a lot of change, things cool. like that. I'll take it. As you are down on the main yeah, floor, <laughs> uh, you are going to <laughs> glance around, and walking around the back side of the house, you will find that out facing the front street is an office that he does actually his work in. As you proceed over into the office. You will hunt around for a bit and will find a safe. What uh, what do you do to open it? Um, I'll honestly just have a look around his desk. People tend to forget combinations really easy hmm. and we'll have innocuous little pieces of paper tucked around. It's a numerical combination as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as you... Uh, as you look around, you got four points of investigation. Four successes. Four successes. Yeah. His accountant's desk has a sliding drawer. And as you open it, you'll hear the very slightest. And were you not indoors, you wouldn't be able to hear this, but the slightest little of something right above where the pens are stored. A post-it. Actually, several post-its. Computer passwords. And a four-digit key. I'll try it. The safe clicks open. And you will find that there is... Uh, there are several things inside of this safe. Uh, the first is a small wrapped container about the size of... Um, about the size of a large Tupperware bin or a brick. It's wrapped in brown paper. I'll open it. Uh, how do you open it? Do you just peel the paper away? Do you stick a finger in it? I'll peel the paper off. There's a bag of white powder. Oh. Very, very thickly wrapped and packed. Um, you're not sure off the top of your head what type of white powder it is. I don't want it. So, uh, and you will also, and I don't care to try and sell it. <laughs> uh, you will also find that there are several stacks of cash uh, inside of the safe, 11 of them, each bearing $500 worth of bills. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you proceed down to the basement. Food yeah. money. And as you do, you can hear the the stairs groan under your weight. There's a single naked bulb that hangs around here, and the floor is poured concrete, painted over with that bluish gray sealer. Yeah. There's a drain in the center of the floor that is starting to overgrow from a lack of use. The light illuminates. You can see there's a washer and dryer. There's a big rack with all sorts of things like paper towels and toilet paper along the wall. But what catches your attention is a smell. You smell dirt. Hmm. No. You smell... 
You smell mud. And something slightly it's familiar, but you can't place it. As you pace around the room, you look down at the large drain in the center of the floor that's overgrowing with just various molds. Mm. There's a smell underneath that. Mm. Do you pry it up? Uh, yeah. You can easily do so. It's just a you lift and twist. Okay. Um, your fingers will brush the mold and it feels squishy beneath your fingertips. As you twist it up, the pipe beneath is... Mold is growing up around a blockage. It looks like something that's... It's in a... It, it's muddy, whatever it is. It looks like a bag that was dropped in the mud and then thrust into this pipe. What did you do? Gross. Let's see There's what it so is. Many yeah, <laughs> so many things. Yeah, many things. This guy is not a good guy to begin this with. This is a mess. Let's yeah. see what he did. <laughs> it's heavy. And your hand conforms to the grip of the pistol immediately as you pull it out. Okay. <laughs> it's a pistol. Oh, okay. Those hmm. of you who are watching from America, much harder to get in Vancouver. Not impossible, but much harder. Yeah, that's my uh, reaction. So there it is, a light pistol. Oh, okay. Just, um... Just you gonna take it? Put that away, yeah. Okay, uh, so <laughs> it, it, is, it is inside a muddy plastic bag. You okay. may rip the plastic bag and take the pistol. It Away from the bag so you don't get your purse muddy. Yeah, yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, the pistol itself that. is not very dirty at all. Ah. Very good. So congrats, you have oh, a gun. Good, good. That is terrifying. Wow. Yay. <laughs> so, and with that, um, back up to the kitchen. What did, did you roll anything? No, I have not yet. Because um, I want to help with, with the, making this place go up in flames as much as possible. And also <laughs> to make it break down and crumble. So maybe some structural weaknesses in the foundations or something. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Find some tape. Okay. Let's tape up all the cracks of the windows. Mm -hmm. The condenser from the fridge, the fridge is still on, is going to click on sometime. We're going to fill the cat, the house with gas from here. Okay. And hey, if the gas can't go anywhere, kaboom. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I'm willing to take notes. Yeah. Do you have any notes? Um. Less kaboom? More kaboom. More kaboom. More fire. More kaboom. How more kaboom? Uh, how much more can we just I'm thinking I'm thinking I this whole place this. goes down look this is what worked in Fight Club uh, yeah okay. can I yell probably. suggestions from the other room as I'm you, 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 you can come out because okay. it didn't take you much time but so we're just I've got two points of science so because um, I ignore for a demolisher um, like I ignore two points of an object durability so helping destroy things is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Combination of strength and that's the strength part, not the intelligence. But I can help just, like make things weaker to make them crumble more easily. You or, know the point. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. the points, and I can go like good. punch into like. That sounds good. So what would be a good place to do this? <sighs> I think what we should do is a teamwork roll. I agree. So. So this is going to be intelligence plus. What do you got? Well, I ain't got int. I have strength. I have a single point of int. <laughs> okay. Question. <laughs> Gas rises, yes. correct? But it would be slower because isn't it heavier than air, this one? Natural gas is heavier than air usually, isn't it? Is so it will fill the chat. downstairs first. People in the chat. Is natural gas and slowly heavy. go upstairs. So you might want to set your trigger upstairs, so the whole place will fill. Yeah. Especially if you crank it right as we leave. Uh, um, and I also no, have... natural gas is almost 40 times lighter than air. All right, so then um, it fills upstairs first. But yeah, liquid propane gases, or pardon me, liquid pure petroleum gases like propane are heavier than air. Mm -hmm. So natural gas would not be... What would it be propane? 
No, it would be natural gas. It would be natural gas. So this will yeah. rise fast. Okay. Mm-hmm. It would be yeah, propane if it was in a tank outside. Yeah. Um, uh, this is a suburban neighborhood. Yeah. Barbecue. You don't want it to blow up too much. It's I suppose. Um, but yeah, I also I have... <laughs> okay, from, from the image, the other house has yeah. like the literal like five foot clearance. That's true. Mm. Yeah. We want it so to we want burn, it to colla- like burn and collapse, not necessarily explode. Mm. So if it like implodes on itself more than explodes, we could definitely do some so go what? after the foundation, structural stuff. Because I got the uh, ha- load, load entropy's toll, which I can target things with. Sure, you could go down to the basement and take a look for something to bring it down. Yeah, I mean, I can. How do this? this works. Um, I use. Would Howls and unleashes destructive power of entropy against the target. Uh, the cry is obviously audible to anyone nearby, but on a success... So you use it only in the basement, probably. Each success causes two yeah. points of damage to the object structure, ignoring any durability that it may have. So, would you like to go down to the basement and see if there's any load-bearing beams or anything? Yeah. Most cool. people should probably get out, though. So, are you going to say that as you should walk down the stairs? Yes. All right. People should probably get out. I'll so, call up to right now. Time to go. Okay. So you will pass um, pass Claire as she walks out the door to the basement. Sure. And as you walk down, you'll see that there are two load-bearing pillars visible in the basement that look Excellent. like they hold up the central beams of the house. Okay. Or the central, uh, central, central of the house. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Could make it look Be like a storyteller. Become an architect. An accident, probably. I mean, I mean, it's, you'd hear obviously hear the wolf howling, but hey, whatever. Who knows? Maybe it was a weird movie or something. Uh, well, the as uh, as you saw, the basement is partially underground. It's yeah. it's more like a half floor. And then, is there a, an easy a way to get out of the basement that I can just like sl- like smash through? I think through the running up the, running <clears throat> up the stairs uh, is probably an easy way to do it. Uh, the basement stairs are near the front door, then you could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's well, it, I say basement, but it's basically like the a lower, the lower yeah. level. It's a floor level. It's like it's a half basement. Ba- basement yeah. kind of. You know, it's it's, like we're gonna say it's a half basement. I'm not gonna use that photo. Okay. So there, so the half mm-hmm. basement. You can probably climb out. Uh, there's probably a window that you can bust out of. That's okay. you'll just have to pull yourself up and bash through. Yep. Okay. You do that. Okay, so mm-hmm. go ahead and make me your demolisher roll. That's going to be. Uh, so this for this, it's a specific. Or do you want the demolish to go through the for the window? I, I you window? know what? I don't think you should worry about that. I think you're going right through the window. Yeah, because <laughs> the, the demolisher part doesn't do a roll. It just means I ignore certain things sure. on regular time. So go ahead and this give me the gift roll. This is the and I just need to get back to the page because I sure managed to hit something that made me go away. That's okay. Of it. So while you're calculating it's that, what's everyone else doing? I'm I think have helping have rig the natural gas to at least start a fire. Okay, give me a. Wits plus science roll. I'm just gonna duck out of the house. Uh, yeah, I think I'm Be just like, getting this guy out of there. Holding the camcorder. This guy was fucking nasty. Yeah, God, he did. Okay, wasn't plus expression yeah. just on her? <laughs> Four successes. Four successes? Uh, yeah, so you tape up the windows, you realign everything, you check the fridge to see like, how the. Uh, the ignition's going to come on when it does do its cycle. Uh, and in the meanwhile, you think, okay, so we can do that. Or uh, there's another option, mm-hmm. which is you grab the microwave, you carry it to the other side of the room, you throw a fork into it, <laughs> and hit start as you walk out the door. Yeah, that works. Um, so I can also do the all doors locked thing, which is a single essence, which will just straight up. Oh, I got the world of oh, darkness. The world of darkness. We have some. We both have it. We both have it. Um, so I can just like unlock it, the door, like the window, if it opens at all, and just. Yeah, open you can. It. Yes, you can use that yeah. power. Do that and seal all other doors once everyone's clear. Okay. So that this thing is a lot more likely to not let gas out, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And oh yeah, we don't have to actually, uh, we don't have to tape them if she uses that. Yeah. Nice. Just gonna, yeah. So we'll which do way that. are you doing this? Are you doing the uh, microwave option or are you doing the... I'll do the microwave because that'll spark a fire and a small explosion probably, but not a huge explosion. That sounds right. good. All right. So and you'll... it should cause most of the main floor to severely burn, which that's what we really want burned. You've got this. 
Yeah. He says to you. Yeah, if we do it this way, it'll be faster. Not as much build up, hopefully. Expression and one. should burn this floor at least. One, However, two. we do know that, that he's buried shit in the backyard. They're gonna find some stuff. Look, they're gonna find stuff in the wreckage anyway. Yeah. Okay, so. It's... At least this way, most of it's covered up. And this should look like maybe he tried to cover it up and leave. At the very least, maybe we're creating a couple of fire spirits to go after the hunger spirits. The beautiful thing about fire spirits, it's really hard for them to accidentally make McGath. He says, of course, referring to spirits that eat outside of their choir and become strange hybrids. For example, a crow can't eat a water, or pardon me, can't eat a spirit of sunlight. Hmm. Or a spirit of a Chevy Impala. A Chevy Impala potentially could eat a spirit of... A, a deer. I guess you could hit a deer. Mm -hmm. car. That's kind of in its wheelhouse. But a Chevy Impala could not eat a spirit of hope. I don't think that really works. Yeah. Mm. What about rust? Oh yeah, definitely. Because rust would eat it. Yeah. No. They can eat it back, though. Then it incorporates it and becomes a rusty Chevy Impala. Uh. Basically, <laughs> a, a, a Magath is a spirit where the two concepts fundamentally don't, don't work. work together. Okay. Like a, I think they have like an owl that eventually devoured a spirit of a dump truck because it was hungry and it did, but that changes its nature. So now it's the, the dump truck that is also an owl. So it is the owl. Cool. That makes no sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And <laughs> other, other spirits avoid these things. Ooh, my name is Owl Dump Truck. It's usually it's usually like construction equipment in games I played. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Russia, um, Riley's going to go out the door with the two of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. and so everyone's go. Everyone's out. Please. Do you? I'll call down to you what we're doing. Okay. For it. Cool. Uh -huh. Before we leave, so that you are aware of what's going on up here. What is your signal that you give to Kate? Um. You just stomp on the floor. A stomp and a a howl. A, Howling bark or something like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, uh, so whatever I, I our usual like hunting already. signals are probably. Yeah. And with that, as you as you stomp and hit the button, you are going to hear somewhere down the block. You will see as Riley steps out the door, he walks to the street, looks down the block, and starts pointing at random cars on either side of the street, and their alarms go off. <laughs> yes. oh. Excellent. Hey, gifts Great of technology are amazing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, what Kate's going to do when she goes down is she's going to uh, shift into... Cause she can still use a gift in a wolf form, right? Yes. Yeah. She's going to shift down to Urhan, and she's going to um, do the howl of the Entropy's Toll. And I got four successes. Okay. I rolled the things. And then she gonna book it. And as she does... I need you to make me a strength, strength and athletics roll. Okay. To jump out the window. Okay. Because it's about like six feet off the ground, right? Okay. There's no door from it. We decided it was just a window. It's just a window. Okay. So strength and athletics is gonna be... In Irma, um, it's pretty easy. But... Yeah. Um, I'm assuming he does the, the car alarm thing up the street away. Yeah, yeah, it's basically at the edge uh, of either block. Well, it doesn't so it's going to like catch attention down there, but it not just here. Does my, yeah. It just does my dexterity. Mm -hmm. So maybe... You I do Urshul. Do, yeah, Urshul then instead. Because I can need a plus two to strength. Um, so and then you just literally bust through the window. <laughs> you're just so big. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you use the gift that allows you to seal the building? Yeah. So the window's open. Why are you shifting into... Well, because I was going to... Because I'm howling. So, and then escaping. Right, so, if someone's coming and looking for evidence, sees a dog, hears a dog howling and running, I will and also say, sees a bunch of dead end, like, like dead animal If you're trying to get through this, this is a small window. Yeah. You're only going to be able to make so it through it in Kishu or Urhan. So, then I will do Urhan. Yeah. Yeah. So, that will make a difference. I was just thinking about a dire wolf fitting through that window, and I'm like, mm, That's fair. I didn't describe the window very you well, really but let's... Not. But it's it's a basement window, and I always picture that as one of the little rectangle ones, right? Yeah, because yeah, I know like the basement windows that I have are like the size, like about almost the size of yours in oh. some parts of them. Yeah, depending and on I'm where. in I'm in a basement suite that's like still technically above ground, but my windows are like so you size, never so. know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. But, I'm gonna go yeah, with. I'll go with uh, Han then. I'll go with the window. Because I'm trying to go with plausible deniability. Maybe they saw a dog run away and escape from this burning house. All right. 
I'm trying to be smart. She's only got in one. That's fair. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you got this. And at the very least, it's not your face. I, yeah, love, exactly. I love that the more times I say yes to Amy, the more times that she just gets, like, nervous. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, no, go ahead. Do you what, start do, justifying do, it more. Do what you want. Like, it is I, cute. It's fine. I was yeah. just like, oh, actually, I imagine the window being smaller, but go, go nuts. I see at least one success. Yeah, I'm just I imagining like a three. dire wolf busting out of half of the house. <laughs> and <laughs> as, as she does, like, oof, yeah. the, the window slams behind, probably slams behind her. So what you'll see if you're glancing up, like, Don't forget is she explode. getting out of here? And suddenly the window just open itself. And you hear the howl, like it's going to be loud. Well, it's actually drowned out a bit by the sound of all of those car alarms going yeah, off. Yeah, that's true. But you'll hear, and then, actually. And she runs out like her tail's on fire. Uh, the window will go, and the wolf will launch itself through there, <laughs> and the door will almost shut on her tail, <laughs> but just barely slam down behind, and the wolf runs back off to meet you. <laughs> you reconvene in one of the shadowy parts. And within 30 seconds, the ground shakes as the house ignites. We should uh, probably, yeah. go, probably try and get out of here before anything else shows up. Yeah, I think that's probably best, Riley says to you. Yeah. Where's your car? Just up the street a little ways. I'm gonna walk you. Okay. Kate will stay as a wolf. <laughs> For now. Lights begin turning on. I move very quickly. Uh, we'll probably stay in the shadow of some of the hedges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And walk. Gonna put, like, a try and get enough distance back, between like, us that yeah, it wouldn't so look weird to dog. not be looking at this. I mean, she, yeah. doesn't, she looks unusual for a wolf, too. Right. Right. And you, know, not you make it around the corner to your car. <laughs> yeah, you're just a high percentage wolf dog. Wolf dog. Yeah. And you're gonna drive? Yeah. So you open the door. The door. You let the dog in. Kate jumps in. Yeah. Kate jumps in on my lovely protected seats. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> As you open the door, Riley wraps his fingers around the door frame and holds it. Appreciate you coming to me. This would have caused some big shit if you just kicked in the door. Definitely didn't want to do that. We've been on good terms for quite a while. Like to stay that way. Yeah. Same here. You all have a safe night. You too. You too. Oh, take care. He will make a point of shutting your door for you. <laughs> one like part I'm, gentleman. You're leaving. <laughs> but one part, he's a hunter in darkness that allowed you into his territory. <laughs> he the door on us. <laughs> if he doesn't, Goodbye. and he and as you drive away, you will watch him slowly walk behind your car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tribal bands are tribal bands. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with that, no you will, offense taken whatsoever. You will make your way across. Across the city and it's not that long before you'll find yourselves where would you be going back to your back to your den den or back to somebody's place kate will shift back and put her seat belt on <laughs> while driving okay. well while you're driving <laughs> did anybody want something to eat Yes, I'm oh. st- not no. But yes, I'm starving. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty hungry too. I didn't get my shift meal. Megan will start taking the turns back to her place. Mm. Um, as as we're driving, I'm gonna just like open the the camcorder and watch the the video. Who's just that? kind of speed through Who's it. That? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the? Oh, I'm in the back seat. You are yeah, going yeah. to watch some uh, some very um, very graphic. Um, actually, the first, because you're watching it in reverse, mm-hmm. the first couple of nights, you see that it's, doesn't have, it's actually got video files. It's low resolution, but the memory card is quite large. I would say probably 500 gigabyte. Yes. And you can see there are several long clips that have it looks like he was videotaping himself sleeping there's three nights of night terrors Mm -hmm. that you can skim through long terrifying ones the last one ends with him in bed he's ripped his pillow apart and you see him crying 
then as he cries, this is the last image, or I guess the first image that you yeah. see, he cries, laying amidst all of the down on his bed. And as he sobs, wearing nothing but his boxer shorts, he will slowly pick up wads of down and begin to eat them. As you rewind, you'll see that two more Nights of Night Terrors before that, they get progressively lighter the further away you get from now. And then you see a woman. A woman accompanies him to bed. You watch it in reverse and see their coupling. And see that he was blindfolded, handcuffed to the bed. You see a blade. You see her tease the naked flesh of his chest. Drag the blade across her own hand and rub it against his skin. You can barely see it from this angle. She's facing away from you. But you can see on her back scars. And you think the curve of tattoos brands? Without seeing it in person, you wouldn't be able to detect, but there's something feral about her motions atop him. And at the end, which for them is the beginning, you watch as they enter the room. And you can pause a fuzzy still frame of her face. And you think for just a moment, that looks just like Tamara Fourfingers, a member of a member of one of the local tr local packs, one of the ones that borders your territory, not the Blackbirds. Mm -hmm. This is a member of the Silence. Hmm. You think? What was the name? Uh, Tamara. Tamara Fourfingers. Her pinky was. Um, permanently uh, lost before her first change in a car accident. Hmm. Pretty minor car accident, to be honest, but... And with that, you will... have a bit of a shock. And as you're driving, going to look for some food, Your cell phone rings, connecting to the Bluetooth in your car. You recognize the number before it even says the name. It's one of your wolf-blooded. Mm -hmm. Val's brother. The one who has helped you with research since he arrived after her death. Now, I remember that during creation, we didn't actually decide on his name. No, we didn't. So I'm going to give you a couple of options. Her name was Valerie, originally. Mm -hmm. Russell, Troy. Sean. Or... Samuel. Or... Let's say... Go with Michael or um, Nicholas. Mm. It's no, Nicholas. Yeah. Is it Nicholas? Is it Nicholas? Sure. I like Nicholas. Or Does he go by Nick? Uh, he well, can if you'd like him to. 
Mm. He's uh, he's a very handsome man in his early forties. Val always looked like she was in her thirties, but werewolves don't age. Mm-hmm. So you like Russell as well? Sorry. You like oh yeah, there. I said I said we're Russell. Oh, okay, I'm right. I mean, but... I liked Sean or yeah. Samuel. As well. The reason is but... I want to show you what he looks like in my okay. head, uh, and that will explain that. Sorry for the pause, guys. Um, when I when I think of this, I think of a Nicholas. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's more of a that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because he and his... that that face nicknames very well to Nick. I yeah, think. absolutely. Yeah. That face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, sure does. yeah, that's a Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. that's not a Russell. No, no. See, this is why this is why I've had trouble coming up with the name like all day because. Uh, yeah. For those at home, uh, I can't say that he's played by John Stamos, but <laughs> uh, do you answer the phone? Yeah. Uh, Hi, Nick. Hey. Uh, are you out at the moment? Uh, just in my car. It's all uh, four of us. Yeah, I'm at the den. Yeah? What's up? I, I... You driving right now? Yeah. All right, I'm not going to text this to you. Hold on a sec. Claire's phone vibrates. Oh, 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 hello? Uh, it's a text message, a video. Oh. It's a video text. <laughs> okay. Or pardon me, it is, a, uh, it is a still text image. You see the side of your bit, your den? Yeah. It's been tagged by graffiti. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Of another pack. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. You see the mark of a local pack that only shares a smidgen of your territory's corner, called faux pas. Of course. Okay. Um, Gotta fix that right now. Come on. Yeah, that's just part of it. You still there? Yeah. They tagged the den. Yeah. They did that. But there's someone here who wants to talk to you. The ones who did it? <laughs> I wish. Uh, like hanging over the window, over the back of your seat, like chalking at the... <laughs> they said there's somebody here from the silence. Unless it's to do with... They're here right now. Okay. 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 I mean, we're on our way. We're on our way. I guess I'll see you soon. Yep. Yeah. And as you, as you drive over toward the silence, as you dri- drive over toward your den. The den. <laughs> it is your den. Can we do that with the, the the our totem's ban? It's been tagged by someone else. You said what? you have to tag it. Back. Yeah. You cannot call it your, like, you mm, can't call it your own yeah, if it's well, not tagged by, so they've tagged it. But it has our mark on it still as well. Don't know because they've added a, a new yeah, mark on it. You better over tag it as safe yeah. as out there. Yeah, also. So she, she pissed. Brighton is, like, vibrating because, um, like, my, my death rage triggers are resulted or from our boat territory. Right. Yeah. So it won't send me into it because I'm still on specific. Okay. Or no, I'm on common, which is I have to see a werewolf I don't know in my territory. Um, unannounced. Unannounced. So, but I'm just like... <laughs> you agitated. Yes. Yeah. All right. And as you drive off to meet this rival werewolf pack that is, you thought were friendliest in your territory... You look down and can't help but look at the face of one of their members. <laughs> summoning a hunger spirit into a poor accountant. Through a sexual blood rite. And I think there is a good place to stop game one as you're going off to confront this other pack. Uh, oh, did you guys have fun in the first session? Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, that was good. Okay, good. It's, it's hard hitting a tone and getting into things, but you said you wanted the semi political game that also was full of bloodshed so i hope that worked and um well we might actually have this other clan kind of on our side because we were polite about it they want like um, he knew that we got that actually all this. then that went yeah. counter to my initial idea which was that you, we were just going to follow it you were going to follow it and then go oh but it's in their territory i assumed you were going to go blindly in yeah. and start a minor pack dispute well nah. and i mean yeah <laughs> like 
whatever happened in this video happened in their territory. Yeah. So we could show them, show them yeah. that too. They're like, hey, knuckles crack. It's true. Yeah. 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 The true. moment this is over, depending on what happens in this next bit, yeah. I'm going to be back on the phone to Riley and go, so, guess what we just found out? <laughs> Before you do anything with that 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 camcorder, mm -hmm. let me upload that onto the, the yep. gap. I'm oh. gonna. S <laughs> Does okay. anyone else have pointing computer at all? Okay. Uh, is so, that end of stream or yes, are we following? I'm, I'm just gonna give you guys some beats first. So, um, check your aspirations. I yep. already marked off the ones I need to done. test out my stealth. Yes, you will gain a beat for that. Anybody else have an aspiration? Win a fight. Uh, yes, you definitely have that. Get, get in a fight. fight and break something. Okay. <laughs> um, I did those things. Okay, everybody take a beat for uh, playing a session. Yay! Nice. Uh, did anybody fail a roll and choose to make a dramatic failure? No? No. Okay. So exceptional successes was something I added to the LARP, so it doesn't okay. give you a beat. Okay. They're okay. their own reward. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, with that... Okay, we're not using pack beats because that's too much work for me. Fair. Okay. Uh, but I will also give you another beat for first game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a final first beat. So I'll give you a total of three beats yeah. organically for playing the game. Mm -hmm. uh, another one for good role playing because you guys all role played and costumed and went out and like bought outfits for this and like helped me hang a brick wall on my red wall. <laughs> Ooh. All right. That looks good. Like it, it. it looks really good. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in to game one of Werewolf of the Forsaken, the Bitches of Brewery Park. Mm -hmm. uh, there is definitely going to be some things in here. And please, in the comments or um, on our Facebook page, let us know if there's anything we could do to make this setting a little more clear. Um, I'm trying to run a balance between things that they already know about the setting and not over explaining it for them but also making it accessible for you. So if there's a way I could lean more in one direction for your benefit, I mean, you're with us too. You're part of the pack. <laughs> we will see you next time. And uh, don't forget, Generic Fantasy setting is every Wednesday. We'll be back with Werewolf Episode 2 in two weeks. And if you're in the Vancouver Island area, don't forget that Sakinocon, uh, Vancouver Island's own little anime convention, is next weekend, February 20th, whatever the weekend is. Was it? 20... 21st. 21st? Friday. Uh, <laughs> and we are running... I'm running 14 events. Jesus. There. <laughs> Basically, all day Saturday, you can come find us at the GM panels. Yeah. We're, we're, we're locked talk... in one room. No, I'm locked <laughs> in many rooms. I'm locked yeah. in many rooms until the blood right. <laughs> oh, and we're also doing a D&D &D live. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank so. you so much, Kel, for saying the brick wall looks awesome. <laughs> Yay. All right. It, uh, it costs a surprising amount of money for a brick wall. Yeah. yeah. But it looks nice. It looks nice. That's all that matters, right? We'll have to right? play with it and see if we can angle the camera just right to get rid of that edge. Yeah, oh, I yeah, just yeah. noticed we got that. The, the black, we've got the bookshelf on one side and we got the little railing. It's pretty good. So what we could also do is just hang something from that side. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, if we have something like, another, like a black curtain. I do have because I stopped using a tablecloth for this table. So yeah, I... so it just looks like a curtain. Because it looks like that would be on cool. both sides. Yeah. You can't so we'll use that next time. It'll be even better. Yeah. yeah. Less than a real, it did cost less than a real brick wall. Exactly. So, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, a woo. A woo. A woo.